It doesn't take long until the drivers will be tested. After this long front straightaway, it will be a hard braking zone in turn one. Again, Ty Gibbs and Alex Bowman making up row green one. Flag, green green flag. flag is in the air. We're racing at the Glen. Gibbs hard into turn number one. He has the advantage as they go through one, and now some off track, headed up to turn number two. Ty Gibbs trying to get away, and it's Justin Allgaier slips through and by Daniel Hebrick for second. Hebrick will fall to third. You've got Kyle Busch right there in fourth. They snake their way through turns three and four, and now race their way up the back stretch for the very first time. Good tight race in there for third. Kyle Busch looks a little bit offline, not going to make a pass here. First lap of the race. Good better move there to be patient as everybody comes through the chicane. A lot of cars back in the back half of the field, already bringing a lot of dirt onto the racetrack, trying to run side by side all the way through the bus stop. See right here, riding along with Parker Kligerman, trying to get that right side against that curb. This road that Parker was in was caught a break. The whole road moved forward because the second qualifier, Bowman, the fourth qualifier, Custer, had to go to the back. So that whole road that they were in moved forward two spots. And a turn number seven is Ty Gibbs with the advantage, but he has not been able to pull away from Allgaier. Allgaier has stayed right in his tire tracks. It's a dicing for position. Riley Herbst moves to the way inside three wide as they go to turn one. John Hunter Nemechek's going to jam it into the bottom of Riley Herbst side by side out of one. They will race. Herbst now goes to the escape action, but they stay side by side into two. That's very rare here at Watkins Glen. You want to be single file the essence. Nobody giving an inch. John Hunter Nemechek has to. Austin Hill in the 21. He'll race side by side with John Hunter. That's out of turn four. And all of that momentum that John Hunter lost. He's going to lose positions. All the cars coming from behind till we finally get to this part of the racetrack. We're able to fall in line, sort of regroup. 21 car of Austin Hill off track a little bit there. It's going to cost him a little bit here and be on the defense through the carousel. As they head down here toward turn six, you can see John Hunter aggressively trying to get underneath Austin Hill. That's a great example of you try to make a pass and you lose that momentum and it actually costs you a spot. You have to understand when the time to take the move is and when, when, when you should. Well, a relatively calm first lap for some, but to beating and banging for others, the 48 of Clearman goes over the curb and catches the door of the two of Sheldon Creed. Take another look. Two wide going in there and basically, you know, there's just not enough room. It's really no one's fault, but to go through there and the preferred line using both curbs, it's very difficult for two cars to fit, much like it is here in the S's. Watching the field come up to the S's here for the third time of the afternoon. Pretty much a single file of fares. They funnel out onto the back straightaway, trying to catch the front two of Ty Gibbs and Justin Allgaier. Kyle Busch and Sam Mayer already got by Hembrick there for third, fourth, and fifth. Josh Berry under attack from Sammy Smith. That's been a good battle to watch. Right behind them, Riley Herbst, the 21 of Austin Hill. John Hunter Nemechek under pressure from Creed for 10th. And yeah, Creed had a good start to this race. Picked up a few spots. Now the skill of trying to outbreak somebody, gain some, some, gain some ground on border entry without missing the braking zone and driving through the corner. That's so important on road courses. That's how you make passes, and that's how you make lap time. Kyle Petty said there's only been five races so far in the season where Sheldon Creed has been mistake free and the team hasn't had any issues well he's showing aggressive aggression early on as he went side by side with Kligerman through the bus stop earlier to take that spot but now here comes Parker Kligerman closing the gap on Creed Parker pouring on the coals he's trying to take the 11th spot away from Sheldon Creed Parker actually lost to car length maybe two when he went off turn number one so they'll try to regain that ground back and try to close in on Sheldon Creed as Creed tries to overtake John Hunter Nemechek. And you see so many different lines coming out of turn one, and that wide exit of one sets you up for a fast run up through the S's. Great battles here as the cars drive through the chicane. Nobody's had any trouble. We usually see a lot of cars get spun out earlier in this race trying to battle through here. So far, just a lot of cars dropping tires in it. Oh, now we got a car going around in the chicane here. Like the sixth car. 
Brendan Poole's been turned around. Some contact through the middle of the chicane. He gets underway and carries on. Now Brendan Poole, you can see, he's taking his car around, trying to figure out how much damage there is to the car. Hoping it's not bad. Don't see any real damage. Let's go back and see what they did. You just talked about it side by side in that inner loop. It's hard to go through there by yourself, much less side by side. Contact made with a 96 of Max McLaughlin, and so they got it straightened back out again. Yeah, the tough part roll you see right here, Hemrick under attack again. This car is fading back to the pack. Just not handling really good. Doesn't look comfortable for Daniel. Lost a few position and now got three cars pounding him from behind. Herps right there side by side with Sammy Smith. They're going to sort it out. He's going to now look to the inside, try to outbreak him down in this corner, Jim. Yeah, heavy breaking zone right here. He did not push the issue. They all got caught up behind Hemrick. Now Austin Hill trying to take the fight. He decides to be smart, not go side by side at seven. Five laps complete on lap six here at the Glen for the Xfinity Series, and it is definitely a party, a good tailgate party at the Glen. Left and right turns, and stage one underway. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, and motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Seven laps complete, 13 still to go in stage one. Remember, there aren't stage breaks at road courses. So once we get to the end of stage one, they will stay green. And you'll be able to accumulate points in the top 10 getting points and right now Ty Gibbs is pulled away from Justin Allgaier by 2.7 seconds and it was closer than that when we went away. Yeah this 11 of Daniel Hemrick the white car with the kind of blue on the right side there the car on the inside 
he seems to be struggling a little bit with the balance and doing the, the best job he can, but it is a stack up behind him as you ride on board with the 48 of Kligerman right here. You see Sheldon Creed trying to tiptoe his way through. Everybody being somewhat polite, and during break, the 24 of Connor Mozak was running just outside the top 20. He gets right here into the inner loop, overcooks the inner loop, and actually does a nice job of only involving himself. It was a mistake, without a doubt. But, you know, right here, easily, Stefan Parsons could be collected in this. And he, I mean, that's what happens, right? He continues to turn right to miss Stefan Parsons, and he spins out. Stefan doesn't know how close he was to being <laughs> uh, part of this incident. Also during it right here, the 10 of Kyle Busch just gets a little driver left. No real damage. The concern is the grass. You see it right there. While the grill screen catches it, if you do that enough all day, it filters into the grill screen. It'll actually start to fill the radiator. Then your car will overheat, and there's nothing you're going to do about it. You can't get more air into it because it will be behind in the ductwork. What a battle right here. Sammy Smith trying to hold Austin Hill off. Austin Hill almost into the rear bumper through the carousel. Did not touch him, but all sorts of pressure. Sammy Smith's going to have to be perfect. Austin Hill's going to try to lift a little bit early and turn before Sammy Smith to try to get underneath him. Sammy defends. You look at the left, biggest movers, Cole Custer went to the back due to that leak. They had to repair up 21 spots. Moffitt and Bowman. Bowman also in the back up 14. Custer's all the way up to 15th, Rick. Super impressive. Big run and again, another breaking zone here in turn one. Hemrick on the outside in the 11 shoots way out up against that outer wall. And Cole Custer is in the middle of this mess going through turn two. They are stacked up now as they go up the hill. Cole trying to find his way through, while at the same time, Daniel Hemrick in the 11th, backsliding just a tad. You got Jeremy Clements in the 51. Free wide action up the back stretch. As these drivers go through the bus stop right here, the problem is the track is dirty from all sorts of cars going off track. We got another car spun around. Two cars off in the middle of the bus stop. It's like, this, oh, it's a 16 there, Smith. It's gonna cost him many spots. And then, all oh, the 51, a right front tire flat on Clement's car. Just so many ways to have issues in this particular part of the racetrack. Let's take a look at the replay and see what happens. Yeah, Clements thinks that he's clear on the inside and he moves down. Just some contact. Oh, he already had the flat tire, misses the corner entirely. That was just a lot going on there. And then look how dirty this racetrack is. All of the grass, you can't, you can't run offline here. You're gonna have problems, lose a lot of traction. Clements blows the right front tire. Marty, what you got? Rough few minutes for Colla Gracie Jr. You saw Chandler Smith spin right there. Now Kyle Busch here on pit road came on the radio said, I have a flat tire. He was saying the car were handling wise extremely free. They got all that grass off the grill as you see a massive adjustment here trying to tighten up the 10th car for Kyle Busch. We'll see which tire was indeed flat. The disappointment for this is with 72 laps to go. You see Jeremy Clements now coming into the service of his crew. 72 laps to go. I'm just not sure these guys can make it on one more stop. We'll have to wait and see, but that makes this an even bigger penalty for the 10 of Kyle Busch. They would need some caution, right, Steve? A lot, yeah. yeah. Well, we think they can go 31 or 32. That's like eight laps short, so we'll have to see what they'll do. We're on board with Parker Clearman still. Trying to work his way up here right in front of him. I believe that's the 18 of Sammy Smith. Sheldon Creed just in front of him. This is that turn one Parker mentioned in the pace laps. He thinks this is the most important quarter, not only for the braking zone, but for the exit of this corner because it leads over to the S's. So different lines drivers taking as we see him coming back online into turn two. And that is the bottom of the S's. Watching Parker Klergerman there in the 48. We got Sheldon Creed at the two in front of him, but here comes Cole Custer in that double zero. He's won twice already this year on road courses, trying to get himself back to the front, trying to get him a third. And this group, you know, this is a battle right around the top 10, but they are 20 some seconds, 22, 23 seconds behind the leader. The top five are so spread out and driving away. While all these drivers right here have raced so hard side by side through most of the racetrack, it's cost them a ton of distance to the lead. Yeah, there has been a hard fight. 
Look at this right here. Look at this battle into the inner loop. Sammy Smith out of control. And then Riley Herbst using all the racetrack contact right there. Fortunate both of those guys didn't go around. Watch this contact right here. Just right there, the 98's lucky he didn't go around. But that has been a fierce battle. And look at that blue and white car of Cole Custer. He had to start in the back, and he has driven all the way to 11th place. And they know he is here. How demoralizing. You look in the mirror, you know he had to start in the back. And in this few laps, eight, I'm sorry, 13 laps, he's already caught you. Now, Custer, 25 points for positions made up since the start of the race. And now he's trying to put a little more pressure on to Parker Kligerman. Marty. And Rick, let's just clean up what happened with Kyle Busch. It was not a flat tire. It was all the debris, that grass that was on the grill. The brakes were heating up, and the temperature inside the water certainly heating up as well, Dale Jr. So they had to pit for that. And I did confirm, Jr., they are eight laps short for making it on one more stop. Yeah, that's pretty compelling. We have to remember that really affects their race. There would be no stage brake cautions to be able to allow them to catch up and regroup. We see Clements battling with cars, the lead lap cars. Still out front, it's Ty Gibbs, and he's moved from sixth to fourth in all-time road course laps led. He just passed Ron Fellows and Kyle Busch. Ty Gibbs with almost a four second advantage over second place Justin Allgaier. And normally when things run as well as they're going for Ty Gibbs, guys are pretty quiet on the radio. Dylan, is that the case with Ty today? Well, he has been quiet, and the only real conversation has been his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, telling him, when your lead gets to three seconds, start to save me some fuel so our fuel stop will be just a little bit shorter and we have to fill it up. Well, Ty did that. His rhythm and his lap times are so good, the gap has continued to grow now to almost four seconds. So things are going well for the 19, Marty. Dylan, we talked about what a critical race this is for Riley Herbst, just 34 above the cut line, had top 10 times earlier on. In fact, fifth fastest lap time last time. But is there a problem inside the 98? Listen on the radio. Decent truck transmission. You know what you got. Stay with it here. You can do it. I think it must have hopped out the bus stop again. Yeah, I figured. 
So Dale Jr., what's going on is that the car is hopping out of gear when they go over those curbs you showed us earlier in the bus stop. So how would you keep it in gear all day long? Still 66 to go, long way to go in this race for Riley Herbst. Yeah, you're going to have to drive with one hand if that gets much worse, and that will get worse. Usually when you tear up the transmission or use it up, beat it up, those gates, they no longer hold the car in gear. Lifting on and off the throttle, going over curves, all of those things can let the gear, the car come out of gear unknowingly. And so at some point, I mean, he really has to drive this race one-handed, holding that car where it needs to be, it's whether, whether it's third or fourth gear. Right now, he's running in the seventh position right now. He's got Sheldon Creed behind him, doing a good job here in the S's keeping that car dialed in to the bottom portions of the curbings, whether they be driver's left or driver's right. He right now is running in the seventh spot, 25 seconds behind the race leader. Yeah, it's pretty incredible what the leaders have been able to do in just a short amount of laps, driving away. The rest of the field's absolutely gonna need some sort of a yellow, some sort of a sequence to allow them to gather back up get back into this race. The two of Creed getting right to the back bumper of Herbst right there. It's going to cost him on corner exit, though, as he drives away. Yeah, Riley Herbst and Sheldon Creed both are in position to earn stage points, point three to go. And Parker Kligerman is not in the top ten. So both of these drivers can finish this stage out. That's an advantage to them. Parker talked about it. They have good finishes, but they just need stage points. And right now, not on final cue to get it and we ride along with the xfinity mobile on board of parker kligerman right now running in the 11th position the top 10 spots will all get stage points so that will hurt parker kligerman's hunt to get into the playoff picture as he makes a pass there but kligerman still running in that 11th spot sammy smith just in front of him here they come now into turn two. Parker making the pass around Sammy Smith. So Parker breaking his way into the top 10. Now, once he's made the pass and is starting to pull away, he's got a long gap before he gets to Cole Custer in ninth. But good news for Parker, at least here in the early go. Yeah, he gets around Sammy Smith, and that allows that car to get some clean air, not just for the aerodynamics, but the brakes and everything. This thing's going to perform and drive and steer way better in this clean air, he should be able to drive away from the 18 rather easily. Parker, a great little road racer. These are his opportunities to shine, if not try to win some races. And you mentioned, you know, not a lot of contact right here with Herbst and Creed. Still contact, banging in each other in turn six. Creed has the preferred okay, spot. The double zero. Getting into back. turn Focus. seven. As they come out of seven, Creed sliding up into Herbst, almost into the wall as they come off of seven. A drag race down the front stretch again. We'll see who has advantage when they go into turn number one. It looks like the two of Creed is going to outbreak the 98 of Herbst, but they've got the double zero of Custer right behind them. As the race for the seventh spot, Creed will slide through. He'll grab seventh. Now they're side by side for eighth right there. You've got Cole Custer. You've also got the Riley Herbst car, the double zero and the 98 stacked up there. They will thin this battle down. That was some hold your breath racing coming out of turn number one. Sheldon Creed's been able to capitalize. Here it is right here, what we saw just a minute ago down the back straightaway. And I don't know if Herbst is doing that intentionally off the get go, but we heard the frustration in his voice with the transmission and I like it. I want to see some fire from this driver. He's improved a lot this year, but we need to see that aggression out on the racetrack. See him go out there and take the argument, and take the fight to some of these other drivers. And he's showing it today. Custer right now hounding Creed. Yeah, Custer finds a much faster car, and the 98 of Hertz and the 48 of Clinton are both Cole Custer fans right now. Get underneath him, take that point away. And already Gibbs is on the final lap as these guys are crossing the start finish line. They're now on the final lap of stage one. But again, there won't be a break. It will just end and the top 10 will earn stage points as this continues to heat up. Custer able to clear Creed as he goes into two. What a march forward for Cole Custer had to drop to the back at the initial start of the race and has driven his way all the way into the top 10. Right now he is seventh, having just put Sheldon Creed in the rear view mirror to Jeppert. Well, way ahead of those guys is Ty Gibbs coming to get the checker. He is out here rolling a four second lead over Algar coming to get this stage win. They've got a half a lap lead over 
the gentleman we were just talking about they were running in 10th and 11 so Ty Gibbs is going grabbing his fourth stage win of 2023 and again being a full time Cup Series driver he doesn't gain any stage points so that will actually take away stage points from people who are running a little bit further in the top 10 all Geyer Sam Mayer in third Josh Berry is fourth As we see this battle continuing to heat up Creed just in front of Herbst Creed able to stay in front of Custer as well as they cross the stripe we just saw Custer go by both of these cars he's back behind him again because he missed the carousel the last time by now let's put him in a position where as the faster car having to do all this work over again so we're watching both cars top of the screen just gets loose that was very very close to spinning the car out and ending up at the tire barrier so a great save but again losing two positions that are hard to get see Alex Bowman in the 17 first to pit oh the yellow out huge break for the 17 of Bowman a huge break for the 16 of Smith Dylan well, and this is exactly what these guys needed as we see the stop car over there the 17 crew needed some needed some help on the strategy and I think they just got it that's yeah, fine. that's going to be a big advantage. Sorry, Rick. So because these cars were already on pit road when the yellow came out, they're going to be able to perform their service and rejoin the racetrack. So as long as they stay in front of the 19, it's going to be a huge break. I think the 17 pulled that off. Unfortunately for the 16, I believe he's gone a lap down through this cycle. So it's going to be good break for one, bad break for the other, Marty. Yes, yeah, Steve, that was very interesting. A lot of drivers were reporting oil on the racetrack. So a number of teams were planning to come to pit road the next time by, including Austin uh, Hill, the regular season points leader so far, because they saw that oil evidently from the 43 car on the racetrack, but the 43 car gave up the ghost before everybody could get to pit road. So that's why you saw Alex Bowman, those other cars come to pit road. They were trying to beat the caution that th they thought was coming out, Steve. Well, that's great great call for these guys the trick is you have to be close enough to do it you lose about 40 seconds 40 to 42 seconds to pit which normally you don't worry about on a 75 second lap but when you have a leader as fast as ty gibbs i mean you heard the guys in the corner say it fifth sixth seventh place were 25 to 30 35 seconds behind so i mean that's an amazing pace by the front five cars now we're hearing the 16 also is going to have a penalty which it'll just put him tail end he was in trouble anyway because he's going to be a lap down now he's going to be a lap down and tail end which is going to make it tougher to get the free pass he drove through too many boxes you're allowed three boxes remember drivers entering backwards so the driver's still on the left side of the vehicle turning in and out it's a little bit different right like think about turning into a parking spot you know where the left front tire is but how about that right front you know when you back out rick you try to pull forward and you don't know if you're going to hit that car you just backed out from you know that's as you creep by. these guys same idea you know they can lose track of that right front corner and touch another box I think we should have a look at it so you're allowed to drive through three let's see right here oh see he just goes straight through he goes through a whole bunch so and that's it's just a mental error because it's just unnatural being on the wrong side you really need to you know really turn left and get out but at this time he probably hears the cautions coming out he knows he's a lap down not going to be a huge penalty, but a penalty the same. So the field tucked in behind Ty Gibbs, and we'll see quite a few of them making their way onto pit road when they get around to it. Well, fans, download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the racing action with free live scoring. There's in-car cameras and a radio broadcast. You can upgrade to premium for full access to driver audio channels and an ad-free experience i'm sure a lot of those folks that are up there on their campers are taking advantage of it all you have to do is search nascar in your app store and start a free trial today so now you have alex bowman is going to be able to stay on the racetrack and probably become the leader or maybe second when all these guys pit It'd be interesting to see what kyle bush does remember he was short on fuel maybe they just do gas only here maybe they stay on the racetrack but right now all the leaders on pit road dylan and all the momentum with Ty Gibbs, winner last week, has been in control so far today. Just said it was a little bit snug for the 19 car. They'll change Goodyear's and add Sunoco fuel, Kim. Justin Elgar in that middle box. He said he's loose to the right-handers, tight to the left-handers, a little bit bouncy in the bus stop. The call is for four tires. So
so no Google. There was a chassis adjustment called too, trying to go one up left rear, Marty. An impressive first run for Austin Hill, who was worried about an adjustment they made during qualifying. But in the second half of the run, he was one of the quickest cars on the racetrack. All these cars pitting here after 22 laps completed here at Watkins Glen. Kyle Busch also on pit road right now as well. Big Ten football is coming to NBC and Peacock. The first game has the Mountaineers of West Virginia visiting the Penn State Nittany Lions. The premiere of Big Ten Saturday night at September 2nd on NBC and Peacock. Either in the grandstands or around the track, you're watching the Shriners Children's 200 at the Glen as we look at the stage points earned. Allgaier grabbing nine for his second place finish all the way down to Parker Kligerman getting a very helpful point there uh, finishing in the 10th spot and out front right now Alex Bowman and Ty Gibbs scored one and two we go to the Peacock pit box Kyle Petty Brad Doherty we expected the cup guys to play into the the result of how this race is going to play out did we expect Ty Gibbs to be as dominant <laughs> somebody needs to tell guy Ty Gibbs to go have lunch or something man he just run off and left the field, but uh, he is dominating. Obviously, I think the best racing is six through twelve. Yes. Where you got Lemachek, Custer, Creed, you know Parker Kligerman, all those guys. They're going at it really hard, Mayor. They're getting after it. So it's been fun to watch those guys. But boy, Ty is hauling the mail around. Yeah, it. they do know this is not the last race before their playoffs because <laughs> those guys are racing in They're that racing. cluster right there. Yeah. Those guys are racing like it's the last lap and everything is on the line. And for a lot of them, for Custer, and for Herbs, for, yeah. for Kligerman, it basically is all on the line. I've been impressed with Ty Gibbs' speed. To pull that far away, to pull 20-some seconds ahead of the fifth-place guy, that's impressive, guys. It is, and we'll see what the good fortune of being on pit road for the 17 of Alex Bowman, how that will play out. And speaking of, let's go to Dylan with more. 
Well, and remember, they were one of the cars that started at the back of the field due to unapproved adjustments. So Alex had driven to about the top 15, but wasn't thrilled with the balance of his race car. Just said they were a little bit tight on that run. But remember who the crew chief is of this race car, Greg Ives, who, of course, worked with Alex for a long time on the cup side of things. They've been so close to a win this year in this 17 Hendrick car. And Alex and Greg both said, I really would like to get a win for this program this year. And Greg said, we're going to need some help because of how we or because of where we start. And uh, I think he just kind of took matters into his own hands there by getting the 17 on the pit road. All four Hendrick cars have driven, or excuse me, all four Hendrick drivers have driven this car number and this entry in Xfinity Series races. Chase was the lone driver who said, I'm going to do it in Oval. I'm going to do it at Pocono. Right. The other three all doing it at a road course. You see the drivers to win in the 17. Kenseth Waltrip and Terry Labonte. The 17 on that car for Alex Bowman uh, in honor of the late Ricky Hendrick. Uh, that was the number that he raced when he was running the truck series one uh, with a similar paint scheme in the truck series. And so that is why the 17 fielded by Hendrick is out there on the track with these guys behind the wheel. So we talk a lot about strategy to start. Well, here you have it, right? One pit stop behind you, 59 laps to go. Everybody in the field needs to make one more pit stop on fuel. Everybody's bunched back up. Marty. Steve, real quick, want to show you the left front from John, Nem John Hunter Nemechek's car. They just pulled off. This is a blister. It is not a flat spot. So would that concern you as a crew chief? You just pulled that off. John Hunter did say it had a vibration. I didn't know it would be that bad. So would that be concerning for you, Mr. Crew Chief? Oh, wow. What happened there with a 92? Josh Williams severe and extensive damage to the front of this car. So they put the caution back out, lights back on the pace car. But a huge problem for Josh Williams. Well, we see a couple cars coming to pit road as well. I don't know if Josh Williams was trying to get caught up um, and just came around the corner and didn't know the field was there. Uh, but obviously some heavy damage. The 25 of Moffat's on pit road now. I'm not sure if that's who he hit. Yeah, I don't see enough damage to the back of a car. That <laughs> they don't hit, seem like there's they a fit, lot of right? damage to the front of that 92. Yeah, that, I mean, that 92 is destroyed. Guys, had, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, there's the choose for this racetrack is exiting the bus stop over here before the carousel. And a lot of cars, especially like probably the last 12 cars of the field, almost have to come to a complete stop because of the, the process of the choose and everybody making up their decision about being able to, being able to go left or right all of the back half of the field almost has to come to a complete stop. So then, once they do decide left or right, they all then try to catch up back to the field coming around the chicane or the carousel headed to turn six. I'm not sure if somebody just wasn't paying attention, but let's take a look here. Yeah, so as these cars are all trying to catch back up with the field, there's another sort of you know domino effect um, that's causing cause that issue. And if you're not really paying attention, you're going to run into the front of the car in front of you. Well, the 25 of Moffitt looked like they had a different issue. I saw him jacking up, turning tires. So I don't know if they have a brake issue or a broken axle. Something is amiss on the 25, Dylan. It's a broken axle, Steve. So you see them going behind the wall. They're going to try to get this sorted out and get Brett back on the racetrack. So, Rick, basically when they jack up the left side and we're turning both tires, that tells me that sometimes if you have a brake issue, like you don't think the front of the rear working, you would jack it up, slowly push on the brake pedal and make sure the front and the back stop together. Or with one rear tire on the ground, you should feel the locker inside the rear gear. So it had to be one of those two issues. Sounds like it's an axle. This car right here, Rick. It had to knock the radiator out of you put the speedy drive down so unfortunate for josh williams yeah so the speedy drive was going down they're going to clean the track off a little bit before the green flag will fly once again we'll take a quick break
NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company, and by the new movie Gran Turismo, based on a true story only in theaters August 25th. Rick, you sure I can't go hang out with those guys back there at the bus stop? Because I'm sure you'd like I to. I think they're saving me a seat. There's an empty seat right there in the front. I think they saw very clearly what happened to the 92 of Josh Williams. Let's take a look at what happened. Yeah, so this is the 44 of Stephen Parsons, and you're going to be shocked to see, I mean, some damage, but nothing compared to the 92. So all the way at the top of the screen, you're going to see everybody start to check up. Uh, and you see. The 25 of Moffitt right there, you can see just to the side of Stephen Parsons, the heavy, heavy damage to Josh Williams. And we heard over the radio, he had said that he was adjusting something inside the car, a helmet hose or, or something. It was literally just not looking up. And, and barely even bent the light that's on the back of that car. There's your lesson for teenage drivers. Stay off your phone, don't adjust the radio. Even a professional race car driver can rear end somebody at the slowest of speeds. Kim. Well, talking with Justin Algaier this morning, he said he felt like it was going to be a battle for the win between himself, Ty Gibbs, and Alex Bowman. And now with Bowman back towards the front, we'll see what these three do in terms of a tango. But Justin said there is an even bigger battle, the regular season championship. He felt like he was going to have the advantage over Nemechek and Hill. But look out because they found themselves both in the top ten. Dylan. Instruction to Sheldon Creed from his team. Find the car's weakness in front of you and make the pass. Do not waste time. Sheldon said earlier this weekend, we should run top five at every road course, but stuff always seems to happen to us. We've got to make sure that things go our way today, Marty. Dylan, let's finish up the conversation with Steve here. This blistered left front tire for John Hunter Nemechek. A concern for you or not, left front tires don't normally flat spot here, Steve. Would you be concerned by that? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit concerning. I don't think the blister itself would call a failure, but now, to Marty's point, the left front normally doesn't flat spot with so many right-hand corners. But now, if you do get it sliding on one of those blisters, that could be an instant flat tire. Getting ready for the restart. Again, we're in stage two. Alex Bowman. And Ty Gibbs making up the front row. Bowman on the inside. Ty Gibbs on the outside as they go in the restart zone. Going higher. Back Rolling underway. Here. On the inside in the 17, Bowman. And the 19 of Gibbs charging into turn number one on the outside. And he is going to take the advantage as they go into turn two. Wow, what a power move by Ty Gibbs around the outside of Alex Bowman. He will go to the lead. Bowman now will fall in. He's in that 17 car. He's second. And the seven of Justin Allgaier, that bright orange car, he'll settle in in third out of turn four. Further back, Austin Hill in the 21 takes the spot away from the eight of Josh Berry. Great battle right there. Creed right behind that eight car as we watch the 48 and the one. Side by side, the 26, Cass Growler in the 18 car. Sammy Smith down into the corner now. All these cars getting through here, good and clean. Good battle. These guys really door to door, very respectable parts flying off the car there, off the carousel. Cole Custer trying to get by the two of Creed. He's gonna put tons of pressure on him. Cole Custer now with track position. He's gonna be dangerous the rest of this race. Saw some parts fly. Also saw some smoke through the bus stop. I don't know. It looked like it was around the one of Sam Mayer or the 98 of Herbst. A lot of beating and banging. We'll have to see if somebody continues as an issue. Custer to the inside of Creed trying to take that spot away. Here they come now out of one. Will funnel out into the entrance to the S's. S's turn two. That's the right hander right there. Will single out in single file. Just watching John Hunter Nemechek in the 20, Riley Herbst in the 98. That's the stacking up of traffic from eighth on back and a spot of grabs just outside of the top 10 with Cass Grella going at it right there. Yeah, these two continue to battle side by side into the bus stall, oh, beating and banging right there, way offline. Sammy Smith is gonna give up a couple spots, at least one there to Hemrick. And that's how it works, man. Two cars side by side into the bus stop, somebody's gonna end up mad. Yeah, and if you can't draw, like, get away from the guy that's mad. You know Sammy Smith is a little upset at you. Don't ever let him get next to you. You gotta drive hard to keep him from getting by. There he is by the 11 car, so now he's lined up behind you. Get some speed, get away from him. 
Well, I mentioned some beating and banging between the one of Sam Mayer and the 98 of Riley Herbst. Well, this is climbing the S's. It's a tough place to be side by side, but we've seen some of the biggest names battle here. And you see, oh man, the 98 thought he was totally clear, was trying to get to the right. Oh, this would be a great look right there. Good job by Sam Mayer to realize he was running out of real estate and got out of the gas. And then we saw this debris right here. Can't tell exactly. Oh, it looks like some brake hose. So orange hose they put, it's either for the brakes or sometimes it'll be an extra hose cooling the cow or even the beat of the tire. We'll have to see how that becomes an issue later in the race. See Sam Mayer in that blue and black car, the number one car. He lost seven spots on pit road that last exchange. And now he's got to go try to gain a night, almost a 20 second pit stop. You saw him race with Riley Herbst, very aggressive racing. Now he's got to take the fight to John Hunter Nemechek to go get those spots back. So frustrating as a driver, running well and got barred back in the pack. Just gonna say he's gonna go well on pit road, but you can't push too hard. This is an aggressive move right here. Nope, falls in behind John Hunter. Be patient, Sam, got a fast race car. <laughs> Patience for a race car driver. I love when drivers say that, as we see Sam Mayer now once again, within about 10 feet of John Hunter Nemechek. As Nemechek looks to the inside, he's going to try to take the position away from Creed. They make contact. Nemechek surging ahead. And that is the race for the seventh position. John Hunter Nemechek just took it. Oh, Sam Mayer trying to squeeze to the inside of Creed and take that spot. He can't do it. And now he's got Riley Hurst right there. They are lined up at Sheldon Creed's back door as we go to pit road and queue. And talking with Sam Mayer this morning, he said the word of the week for he and the team was tidy, staying clean through the bus stop, through the S's, all throughout the course. And now that he's mired back and has a little bit more to get through, we'll see if that word of the week can still come into play and if he can race cleanly up through the field, Jeff. Well, he's a good road racer, did a great job, won Road America. He's been in a roll lately. He struggled early in his career in the Xfinity Series, pushing hard, speed, but making mistakes. Starting to connect the dots a little bit, starting to get those finishes. Here he is underneath Creed. They're going to get bottled up right here. Can Riley Herbst get a big enough run to make it three wide? Door to door for the position as Riley Herbst ducks in behind. Will he try to make a move and outbreak these two? But it's Creed on the outside, Mayer on the inside. Mayer with the preferred line, and we'll see how far out he pushes Creed. And Take Riley Herbst just waiting to see what lane is going to open up, coming out of turn number one, and none will going into two. Thought Riley Herbst was going to start a run downstairs, could not do it. He's got to follow Creed into two through turn three into four as Sam Mayer begins to separate himself just a tad from this battle. Creed had such a good race going, first 20 some laps, moving forward, getting a lot of great track position now finding himself a bit under attack. You can give Sam Mayer the foul. Man, somebody hits one of the banners back there, Kaz Grala, knocked one of the co bowling banners up in the air. That's laying out on the racetrack right now. I think it'll be okay. All kinds of stuff happening back here. You think it'll be okay? <laughs> he hit a banner and it's in the middle of the racetrack. What it are you talking about? It ain't gonna bother nothing. Leave it there, it's fine. <laughs> caution, well, caution, NASCAR killer. decided that it might not be okay, so. I don't think it's the banner out. as much as whatever the sandbag or whatever it is that holds the banner in place. You're going to see right here, Grala sideways, and then he corrects to the left, and this is where he decides to pierce the grass, filling the grill, and then here it goes, advertising at its finest. That's a that's a 7-10 pickup right there. So, yes. No, he missed it. He only oh. got one pin. There was two signs. That's he only true. hit one. Okay. Look at this replay right here. Was there a contact? Remember, Sammy Smith and Cass Grala were upset at each other earlier. Looks like Grala goes to turn, and Sammy Smith is there, and contact is made. And that sends Grala through the grass and knocking pins over. He's a pretty good bowler. <laughs> well, water shooting up in the air, too, there. So whatever was trying to hold that down. And Sammy Smith had damage on his car. The left front fender is damaged on it. This started several laps ago. They went through the inner loop side by side, banging doors, hitting each other. And now both of them have more damage. A lot of grass on the front of the 26 of Grala, so he'll take that to the attention of his crew. Yeah, Jeff pointed out about the damage. Look at that. It's more damage. It wasn't just slight contact. I mean, that is some heavy, heavy damage. 
Headlights pushed in, hoods up. Can't be helping his view. Maybe a little retaliation that we're seeing right here. Well, this is Kaz. Oh. Yeah, he feels that the 18, he was, he's letting him know, hey, man, I don't think that was just racing. I think you kind of sent me in there on purpose. Marty. Yeah, I think Kaz Grala feels like that was the 18's fault, not his. Here's what he said on the radio. So the 18 retaliated in me for him stuffing it in on me. So there you go, Kaz Grala not very happy with Sammy Smith. I'm sure Sammy Smith not very happy with Kaz Grala. A little hate going on right now here in the Xfinity Series. Grala will have to pit the uh, the. the uh, grass is just all over the grill. That's what they're talking about on the radio right now. So they will have to come down pit road here as he stalks right behind the 18 of Sammy Smith. Yeah, in the end, I think the 18 had more damage than the 26. The 26 is really just a grass issue, although the grill looks relatively clean under yellow. Let's listen into the 18 radio. I didn't even mean to hit him, but I got some foot damage. He just checked up hard and stopped. Well done. Sammy Smith has been taking notes that even if you meant to hit him, don't say it over the radio. So I give Sammy credit. I'm going to take it for face value so he didn't mean to hit it. Or he's at least clever enough as a young race car driver to not say it over the public airwaves. Let's see if anybody takes the right turn here onto pit road. And it looks like most of the front runners are going to stay out. Sammy Smith's going to go check out. How much damage was to the front end of that? And Casgrala never gets old. Two by two once again as we get ready for the restart. Still eight laps. It'll be seven to go in stage two when they take the green. Up front, it's Gibbs and Bowman. And Gibbs with an impressive restart the last time was able to get in front of Bowman in turn one and never look back. Gibbs already has led 27 laps today. Bowman's been out front for four laps in Allgaier one. 
pace car off the track once again as they get ready to come through the restart zone up through the gears they go and Gibbs with a great restart. Into turn number one. He's got a half a car link, and the fight for second is on. Allgaier to the inside of Bowman. Alex Bowman just trying to hang on to that second spot, and he will not be able to in turn two, but he's got lane choice for turn three. Oh, and he's got a full in right in line behind Allgaier. Almost clipped Allgaier in the middle of turn four. That's the battle for second, stacking up into the interlude. The 21's right there. He's going to think better of looking to the inside. Good side-by-side -side battles behind them for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. A lot of dirt on the racetrack, a lot of contact here. Car's trying to figure it out. The two and the 98 still going at it. A lot of hip checks right there. Parker Klingerman and Creed swapping a little paint, coming out of the carousel. Yeah, that wasn't a good exchange for Creed in that red and white car. He's probably a little frustrated. You said it earlier, Junior, losing spots on these restarts. Got a fast race car. Now he's going to push to try to get the spots back. Did nothing wrong there. It just didn't work out for him. We'll see how Kligerman does. He's got Creed behind him. Again, those two right now are fighting for that 12th and 13th position. 12th spot is what they want to be in for the playoffs as we see the 17 of Bowman get back by the seven of Allgaier as they go into turn two. And that is the race for the second position as Bowman almost clips the wall. Now the lane is left open there for Justin Allgaier and company as Allgaier. A little problem coming out of turn number seven. That definitely opened up the lane for Alex Bowman who would eventually take that second spot downhill into turn one. Now the seven's under attack from the double zero. Cole Custer not able to do anything in the breaking zone right there behind them. Sam Mayer trying to rebound from an issue on pit road. Nip, there's Nimichek trying to go to the inside of the eight there. He's in position to attack here on corner exit. No one has had the pace of Ty Gibbs, but that double zero right there, there, I want to see if he can get clean air. Remember, he has driven through the entire field to get to fifth place. If he gets clean air, does he have the pace to keep up with Ty Gibbs? I suspect he might if he can ever get there. And remember, Cole Custer has won two road course races already this year, Portland and the Chicago Street Course. So we'll see if Cole Custer, once he gets clear of Allgaier, if he can clear Allgaier, if he will have anything for the top two. This is the battle for the fourth position. Allgaier in the seven. He's in fourth. Cole Custer in the double zero. He is fifth. They're up the hill now through turn number three. And when Allgaier looks in the rear view mirror, Cole Custer has that mirror filled. You're watching the field snake their way through three and four. Penny up now, right now, through the back straightaway. Nobody really able to close ground on Gibbs. The car's coming through the bus stop here. Bowman in second, still two seconds back. Austin Hill now steadily moving through the field. This guy surprises us every week. The tracks we don't think he usually runs well at or should run well at. And here he is running third, stalking Bowman. What you got, Marty? Hey, Junior, we talked about the transmission issues for Riley Herbst. They're mostly happening right in front of you in the bus stop. What's going on lately with the 98? Listen in. Transmission's not going to make it, Devin. It's all tight in between the gates, and it pops out. I can't even keep a race car in gear or shift it in what gear I want it to go in. Use the brakes to slow the car down and not use it, not downshift it to help it last longer, you know what I mean? So there you go. That's the plan for Riley Herbst. Tim Fedeway, a spotter, said, listen, we need these stage points. Right now he's in ninth. Four to go here in the stage. He told Riley, you can do this. You're tough. He's having to hold it literally in gear, bag man, when he's up in fourth gear. Very impressive to have to do all that inside of the cockpit while all this is going on around him on the racetrack. Solid performance, at least right now, as he works his way into the interlude. And again, under four laps to go to the end of the stage, and Herbst trying to gain any points. Right now, he's in the ninth position, able to gain two if he can stay there.
under two laps to go in stage two. You see the 98 smoking. That was uh, moments ago. So, Rick, there was reports about transmission issues. So when the car started to smoke, I think we all assumed, oh, as we see the 24 of Mozak straight off into the gravel. That looks like turn six. Yeah, he's right in front of me. He's kept it going. He's going to conquer the sand trap. So many people get caught in there and can't get out. Connor did a great job of staying in the gas. He's going to leave a gift wrap present of gravel in turn <laughs> seven forever gets there. So back to the 98, we thought it was a transmission issue, but when he came to pit road, it had a broken track bar. That's why the rear tires are moving left and right. Tire smoke. I think this is a separate issue than the transmission. I'm not sure if they're connected, um, but either way, you see big issues for the 98. Marty. Yes, yeah, Steve, it is a separate issue. They had the transmission issue all day long that Riley Herbs fought through. And then this track bar issue. Now you can see him. He can barely get a lap in on the track to get back to the garage area as Ty Gibbs flashes by to be able to win this stage. They were at the point when they had this issue, plus 40 above the cut line in night spot. Day over for Riley Herbst. Day over for Riley Herbst. He'll take it to the garage as Ty Gibbs wins stage two. So he sweeps the stages. Bowman in second, but remember two cup drivers, one and two, so that pushes everyone else down as far as points that they'll be able to gain in the stage. By the way, a driver has never swept the stages and then went on to win at a road course. And that, Steve, obviously, because the strategy used to play out differently when you had to caution after each stage. And again, Connor Mozak, we saw him get into the gravel earlier. He was carrying our Toyota onboard camera. Yes, this is heading down to turn six, the left hander. Oh, the 35 just moves him right. Looks like he gets his right sides in the grass. 35 of Stanton Barrett. And then as Jeff says, he conquers the gravel. And it looks like it, he just got moved over where his either right front, right rear, or the combination both get in the grass. Let's take a look. Yeah, you see the right rear's in the grass, trying to slow down. That makes the want to spin out. He turns back to the right, really his only option. And off he goes into the gravel trap. He brought a little with him back out onto the track. Plowing through the gravel and I mentioned a little bit making it back out onto the track as we see all Geyer. They're chasing after the double zero of Cole Custer, and Custer now has moved up into the fourth spot. All Geyer in fifth in the seventh. You got Sam Mayer there in the one car. He right now is in the sixth position. That battle has spread itself out, but Cole Custer Jr. is starting to slowly march in on the Austin Hill car in third. Yeah, it's going to be interesting as Cole gets closer toward the front of the field if he can be able to take the challenge to Gibbs. Bowman's done a good job keeping that gap to Gibbs pretty decent. Nobody else has really had the speed of the 19 car. This double zero, though, looks like he might have some for him. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. He had to work really hard to get by Algar. Kept pushing him and pushing him. Finally got by him. Gibbs still with that three second lead. He's out here being smart, making lap time, getting ready for tomorrow. Wants to win this race today in the worst way. But, but needs to win that race tomorrow. You can see a brake duck right here. It's right in front of you, Junior. Yeah, it's more, more tire or more um, hose, brake hose. That could be front or rear. They they run all kinds of hose all over these cars. But and that more. that debris, I'm sure, Junior, isn't enough to bring out a caution, right? Not enough. Not enough. We're good. Somebody's gonna knock that out of the way, and we should be good to go. <laughs> Side by side, up through the S's. We see Bowman going by the lap car there. Pretty interesting to see this 21 car of Austin Hill still keeping it close. The lap track is going to hurt him a little bit here. It's going to cost him a little speed through the bus stop. He'd love to be able to get around this 08. Will he get that opportunity? Yes, down here in the carousel. See, it's allowed to this double zero to close in just a little bit. That's a couple of car lengths that it cost him. Now Cole Custer feels like he's part of this battle. Yeah, he's right there because of that lap car. Remember, Austin Hill announced this week that he is staying at Richard Childress Racing to drive this Xfinity car next year, signed a multi-year deal. Kept hearing his name for Cup Car rumors, but ultimately made the decision to stay with RCR. Keep driving this Xfinity car, Marty. 
Yeah, Jeff, I asked Andy Street, his crew chief, about that. He said, I'm thrilled to have him back for a third season. The jump we made working together, Austin Hill and Andy Street, from year one to year two was dramatic. I think we can take another step like that next year. Austin Hill's biggest problem, Bagman, is right here, the exit of turn one. They're telling him that's where we're losing our time, the exit of one and up through the S's. And problem number two is Cole Custer in his rearview mirror. He's got a handful right now, Austin Hill does. And he looks in that rearview mirror. He's got another black and uh, make that a blue and white car. Cole Custer closing in even more, angling up to try to get a good run into the interloop. Yeah, sometimes the drivers will get out of line just to fool the person in front of them, thinking they're going to charge the braking zone or also to get some clean, cool air into the brake ducts, into the radiator. As Cole's pushing this car harder, it's going to add some more of the brakes, more temperature's going to build. That's a great way to kick the temperature out. And good speed for Custer on the exit of that carousel. That's what we heard Austin Hill's team said he was struggling on the exit of one. So also on the exit of the carousel, both right-handers. So Cole Custer knows that. Trying to take advantage of him off turn one, but to do it, you got to enter turn one very close to him. And he's doing that right now as Cole Custer has closed the gap to about a car length. He'll look to the inside as they go into turn one. That battle for third continues. Third caution of the day has come out. It's for Max McLaughlin here as we see so much damage to the 96. And take a look at why it happened. Look up ahead, it just looks like either rear wheel lock up or wheel hop. You see pretty heavy contact, just some sort of an issue, either mechanical issue or just overdrove the entry. But pretty hard, got fortunate right there. Those two cars mixed them. Max making his Xfinity Series debut. That's turn seven. Big hit driver side for Max McLaughlin. You see the AMR safety crew there helping him get out of that car. It's put us in a real interesting spot in the race, too. As far 30, as pit strategy? Yeah, 36 laps to go. We think they could go, I don't know, 31, 32, 33. 
I've learned you got to kind of, you know, assume they could go a little further than they tell you. So they, uh, I heard a lot of teams this morning say 31 was no problem, 32 is a stretch, maybe 33. So the problem is coming around to 35 to go, assuming they open pit road, that 96 is kind of in an odd spot, but I think we'll get pit road open. Um, right now. Well, no, look. looking at it yeah. from this angle, this is a better angle. From where we sit looking back up, I thought there was some more room. And now that that tow truck is pulled up, we'll probably stay closed for a lap or two, which is going to get everyone very close to their fuel window. So I think it's, you don't really have a choice. You're going to have to pit here and assume this is the spot and you're going to get some yellows you hope to save. And Steve, this puts the pressure back on the pit crews because now coming on to pit road, you could gain one, two, three, four spots with a good stop and lose three, four, five spots on a bad stop. Yeah, under green, you know, so these are backwards pit stops, as we said. The driver is is away from pit wall. The choreography for the pit crew is just awkward. We saw Suarez in the cup race a week ago get a hose stuck under a tire. I blame the backwards pit stop and the choreography some for that. And Suarez said he was a little long. So under green, if you're second or two slower, while it's a lot of time on the racetrack, it might only be one or two positions because you're kind of spread out. Under yellow, if you have a two-second slower stop, it could be 10 or 12 actual positions on the restart. So... To your point, challenge back on to the pit crew. And I think uh, Smith is going to be very happy right here. Chandler Smith has been riding around. We're basically one lap down since he lost his lap. So this should put him back on the lead lap. And again, it was Max McLaughlin who brings out this, the third caution coming into turn seven, loses it. And driver's side door into the wall. They're attaining to him right now. Defending 200 meter world champion Noah Lyles leads the stars of Team USA as they take on the best athletes from around the world at the World Track and Field Championships. Coverage on NBC and Peacock tomorrow at noon and Wednesday at 1 30 p.m. Eastern. Well, Steve, you mentioned that they would be right on maybe the outside of being able to make it on fuel, but 
now that the safety crew has cleaned up turn seven, it looks like pit road will be open. And we'll see how these crews do when they come to pit road. Yeah, it's going to be a full pit road. That's the other thing here at the road course, you know, 26 cars on the lead lap. So, you know, pit crew has to do their job. Drivers have to get in and out of the box the best they can. There's a lot of leader leaders or fast cars pitting next to one another. Dylan. Ty Gibbs, race leader, has had zero complaints about his race car today. They'll change four tires and add fuel. Jason Ratcliffe, the crew chief, though, told him as soon as you leave the box, start saving fuel. It's going to be really close. Kim. You see the double zero of Cole Custer in the middle. He said it has really good fire off speed, just a little free at the end of the run, but not bad. I don't need changes. I just need track position. They're putting four fresh Goodyear tires on that Sunoco fuel, Marty. The end of the run speed was the strength for Austin Hill in the first run of the day. They lost that speed on this run. He said the harder I push it, the freer it gets on exit to the point Steve was talking about a moment ago with 34 to go. They cannot make it to the end, so we'll see what teams do if they take a splash and go coming up here in just a little bit. And how about that pit stop for Austin Hills much? They gained three spots here on pit road, Rick. First off of pit road, even in front of Gibbs. So far today, that hasn't mattered. Gibbs has been the class of the field. But we'll see if Austin Hill has anything for him as Custer is going to restart in fourth. We see the 44 here. Stephen Parsons, a 25-year-old out of Cornelius, North Carolina. Yeah, he has a mechanical issue. The smoke pouring out of the left front. He comes to pit road. That's unfortunate for the 44. He was hit earlier from behind for Josh Williams. I don't think that was um, the cause of this, but you never know if they're connected. It's like a brake issue. And then the caution ended up coming out because of Max McLaughlin. And they're getting high and hitting this wall in the same location. Right there. Big hit for Max McLaughlin. Again, after pit stops, the race off pit row, there's Austin Hill winning by half a car length. And the crew celebrating. Check in on the Peacock Pit Box with Kyle Petty, Brad Doherty. All right, guys, a lot of action and three cautions already. A restart coming up. What are we going to expect? All right, well, here's what I'm going to say. It's, it's, it, the closer we get to the end of this race, we've yeah. got Sammy Smith, Kaz Grawler. We've got a lot of aggressive driving. We've got banners on the racetrack. Yeah. We've got <laughs> hose on the racetrack. We've got everything but cars on the racetrack. <laughs> and, and it is just getting more and more intense. A devastating day. Uh, for, for Riley Herbst. Yeah, no doubt about that. Hate to see that for Riley. Boy, he was really hustling a good, fast race car early on and has the problems. But for me, I'm looking at this. So Cole Custer finally gets a little bit of track position yeah. after he worked his way through the field. He's got a fast race car. I want to see what Austin Hill can do. Can he hold off Ty Gibbs on this restart? He seems to be somewhat fast, but I like the way the young man is just is plying his craft. He's getting better as a race car driver. He's got that extension. Let's see if he can go to work and possibly win this road race. I'm going to say something. There's more elbows being thrown and more people in the lane than there is in an NBA game. Absolutely. And I'm used to what you play right now. It's going to get a little bit more intense. It'll be 33 laps when they come back to the start finish line. Very quiet on the racetrack as everybody's yes. coasting, saving some fuel. Guys towards the back of the lead lap will probably come back and top off either this time or the next time around. I want to check in with the guys around the racetrack, and we'll start with the bag man back up in the S's. All right, uh, it's been not calm, but we haven't seen too much bumping and banging in front of you, Baggy. I would say this is the least of the uh, aggressive parts of the racetrack, surprisingly so. Everybody's got to the S's relatively unscathed, haven't had a lot of drama at this end of the racetrack. Dale Jr., that's all been reserved for you and Jeff at your end of the racetrack, especially over there in the inner loop. Yeah, it's been pretty busy over here. Always a lot of fun watching the guys try to get through the inner loop and some of them make a lot of mistakes through here, but uh, and it makes it interesting to watch. But so far, I mean, it's been your typical race, and it's caused some yellow flags. I didn't know if we'd get as many yellow flags today to really bunch up the field, give some strategies, different strategies, opportunity. But it's been pretty good so far this way, and uh, over to Jeff. Yeah, this race it has been good. Side-by-side -side battles, a lot of contact, a lot of door banging, some shoving from the back, and now it's getting toward the end. And Austin Hill sitting there with the lead. We've seen the advantage that Ty Gibbs has. His braking power into turn one has beaten everybody on restarts. 
Does Austin know that? He's got to outbreak. If he's got a shot, he's got to outbreak Ty Gibbs getting into one. You can't give that up. If you let him in front of you, you're probably never going to get him back. Be aggressive right here on the start. So Riley Herbst uh, off the racetrack, in and out of the infield care center, and Dylan is there to talk with him. Yeah, and they're loading the car up on the hauler behind us. So, uh, Riley, what kind of challenge, first of all, was the transmission issues that we heard you battling, and then ultimately what are your thoughts, too, on your point situation now at, uh, at just plus 15 as it stands? Yeah, uh, well, the transmission didn't take us out of the race. Um, unfortunately, I just kind of acted up all day from the first lap of practice to now, but uh, I just landed into the carousel that last lap and track bar mount where uh, it welds to the fuel cell just broke in half, so uh, took us out. But as far as the point situation, it's just frustrating. Um, I don't think we should be in this position, Dylan, as it is. And so um, luckily next week isn't the cutoff line for the Xfinity Series, and we have some good tracks for us and um, good tracks for Stuart Haas Racing. I'm excited, but um, it's just frustrating that things like this out of our control keep happening. and. Um, it'll turn around one day, and when it does, we'll we'll be happy. Thanks, Riley. Yeah, Riley, not involved in an accident. I had mentioned that in and out of the infield care center. He didn't have to go there. He just they had a car that broke, so he was in the hauler. Uh, came out and graciously chatted there with Dylan. As we look at the points, Herps only 15 now in front of Kligerman. Uh, right now, Herps has scored in the 33rd position. There's a couple spots that he could fall, uh, but at the same time, a uh, pretty difficult day for Riley Herbs trying to stay in playoff contention. Well now Parker Clearman who we're looking at right here he's currently 13th he really needs to take advantage of this he needs to finish there or try to be better and you heard Riley mention Daytona is not the cutoff for the Xfinity Series they have Daytona Darlington and Kansas um, and I think that's a big opportunity for Riley to recover from this it's also a big opportunity for Brandon Jones back there at 14th. He's currently minus 69. And when I think of Kansas, this is the name that continues to pop up. It's a track he runs really, really well at. Uh, so I think you need to be thinking more winners. Marty. Steve, the most popular phrase I'm hearing on the radio right now, max save. Talking to crew chiefs up and down pit road, they're three to four laps short from making it to the end. My question to you, Steve, can your driver save you that much fuel here at Watkins Glen? I think you can save a couple three laps, but I think we're going to see some yellows. With 33 to go, I'm not sure we're going to go green to the end. It's been too rough as it goes. Kyle Weatherman stayed out on the racetrack. That's why you see the four up here ready, on the front row ready, with Hill. Green. And green flag back in the air. Look at Ty Gibbs in the 19. Makes it three wide as they go to turn number one. A little contact there. Gibbs, can he clear the 21 of Hill? He does. And he will reassume the lead. Austin Hill, after dealing with Kyle Weatherman, will fall in second. You see that first side-by-side -side battle. That is for the number three position. You got Alex Bowman getting by Cole Custer. Green, all guard. They're all lined up as they get themselves sorted out after this most recent restart. Allgaier down to the inside of Creed, thinks better about it going into the bus stop. Four car still trying to hold his position. Getting a lot of pressure from Nemechek. Nemechek trying to get to the inside. Weatherman not going to let him have it. He's going to slide up the racetrack, though. The 20 car's through. Sam Mayer next in line. And Sam Mayer's going to try to get a big run right here. Trying to get underneath the four Weatherman. Outbreaking Weatherman in the corner deep, but not as deep as Mayer can get in there. Mayer clears him off the six, and now the attack's coming from Kyle Bush. Kyle Bush in the LA golf number 10 there as he was able to clear and Smith right up against the wall as he came out of turn number seven. He's also trying to negotiate around the four of Weatherman as he continues to drop like a rock after the start of this one. Running along with Parker Kligerman in the Xfinity Mobile on board, and he's also going to get by the four of Weatherman as they go to two. All right, Weatherman getting the shuffle backward, dropping anchor here. After this restart, a lot of drivers just trying to find their way around him, and the more Weatherman holds them up, the more ground they lose. Here again, Kyle Weatherman in everybody's crosshairs as they lead turn four. Back up front, though, Austin Hill leads Bowman for the battle for second through the bus stop. Cole Custer back there in fourth place, waiting on these two to get the race in each other. Austin Hill slowly working his way toward the front. Great on restarts, hustling this race car, overachieving today in this 21. Yeah, he is doing a good job, but Ty Gibbs took him to school on that late last restart. Ty Gibbs started in the second row and beat him into turn one. You're gonna beat Ty with a better car. You can't let that happen. Can someone
someone learned a lesson on these restarts and answer the call of Ty Gibbs. Bowman putting a lot of pressure on Hill now for that second position. Hill, remember, had the lead after he came off of pit road and gained three spots on Ty Gibbs. But now Hill under attack from the 17 and Bowman looking to get by. That's a good four man battle for that second spot. Austin Hill in the 21, Alex Bowman in the 17, Cole Custer in the double zero, Justin Allgaier in the seven. That's about a second and a half, maybe a second and six tenths behind race leader Ty Gibbs as they start to dice it up out of four. They are losing a lot of time to Ty Gibbs. That 17 car filling up the rear view mirror of the 21 Austin Hill. Austin's having to be a little defensive, maybe overdriving the car just a little bit. Not able to make the lap time to keep the distance to Gibbs steady. Also getting a lot of pressure from the double zero Custer and Algar. Yeah, Custer lost a few spots on pit road, so he fought hard to get track position, came to pit road, lost a few spots. You see right here, John Hunter Nemechek underneath Creed. Now Creed has the inside line. Sam Mayer trying to decide which car is going to go the best. He gets caught up behind the two car. Sam Mayer could have checked up a little bit, got some forward momentum, and gotten underneath the two car. Instead, he tried, got in there a little too deep and wasn't able to take advantage. Now he's going to try to outbreak the two. Creed into turn number one. And maybe a little more contact there is the one and the two fighting for position. Side by side into two. Sam Mayer in the one on the bottom. You got Sheldon Creed going to run him hard on the outside into two. You don't normally see that here at Watkins Glen, but that's going to pay dividends for Creed. He'll be able to hang on to the spot. That would be the seventh position. Sam Mayer right now running in eight. Yeah, that's something new that we're seeing at this racetrack over the last several years is the driver being able to defend on the outside of turn two. And it really delays that opportunity for Sam Mayer in the faster car to be able to take this position and move on. So now this whole lap goes by as Sam tries to reposition himself for an opportunity to get around Creed. Good run right here off the carousel. It's got a lot of forward momentum. Creed knows it. Creed blocks to the inside, does not give Sam the outside lane. That's a great defensive move right there by Creed. Kind of took both lanes away from him. The battle here between the two, the one, and the 18 of Sammy Smith. The driver missing the eight of Josh Berry. Pitted from seventh, had a 20-second pit stop that's taken him outside the top 10. He's trying to recover as Sam Mayer pulls to the inside of Creed, tries to complete the pass into one. Sammy Smith trying to follow him through. Tight battle now for Mayer, for Creed, and for Sammy Smith. They stack it up now, coming into turn two. Sheldon Creed having been bypassed by Sam Mayer, just trying to stay ahead of the Sammy Smith car. Come on. Bagman, you see John Hunter Nemechek second in the regular season points, pitting here for fuel only. That will get them to the end. He can run hard, so that's an interesting dilemma, Junior. You do pit here, or do you rely on cautions to get you to the end? Yeah, that is a tough call to make. If you do pit, you're definitely going to need this race to continue green. This battle here continues. <laughs> there are all kinds of different ways to exit the carousel. Yeah, and they're using all every bit of the racetrack. An aggressive pit strategy, really, by Nemechek. But with all the wins, why not try to get aggressive, trying to do something different, Steve? That's exactly right. So they obviously feel like they're too short to save or to get enough yellows. If I was within two laps, I would probably risk it. If I'm shorter than that, I would definitely come in and get gas. Now we're seeing another Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. So you would imagine similar Steve, fuel mileage? Steve. Yes. So there's also a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota leading the race. This has got to be a tough situation for Gibbs. Kim. And this is strictly a strategy call. They told Sammy on the radio it's going to be fuel only to get him to the end of the race. As he has a little trouble there firing off, fuel only for Sammy Smith. Well, Dale, you bring up a great point. The difference now for the Joe Gibbs Toyota leading is that if he runs out of gas with one or two to go, he could just shrug it off and go kind of back into running the cup car tomorrow because he's not running for points. Both of the full-time cars, they came and get gas. You wonder if that's the split in the strategy. And remember earlier in the race, Ty Gibbs was told once we get a three-second lead, let's go ahead and start conserving fuel. So the possibility exists they'll be doing that again, also with a three-point lead again. Listen into the radio. You know, can't really save enough fuel to make you through. It's going to take caution. So, well, at this point, no, it's not going to happen. But at this point, it'd be better to save tires and fuel. So, yes, still saving would be a plus. But can't save enough. 
Well, can't save enough, and you, it's really hard to save enough when you run roughly, you know, three or four tenths of a second faster than everyone else. But for what they're here to do, why not? Run this thing out. Let's see where it goes. Gambling, the option of a caution to come out. NASCAR Fan Rewards is free to join. You can earn points by watching races, answering trivia, playing fantasy, buying race tickets, and more. Save your points, trade them in for free tickets or autographed merchandise with some many, many more options. Visit NASCAR.com slash Fan Rewards. Ty Gibbs with a 3.2 second lead. He's led 50 laps already of the 58 that have been run. Want to take a look at the Toyota driver update. Yeah, it's a little unfair to Nemechek and Sammy Smith, 25th and 26th. That's because they've pitted, topped their fuel off, so we know they can make it to the finish. The real question now is the chess game has kind of begun already. We're hearing some whispers on the radio about saving fuel, limited RPM. You shift a little bit early, like you short shift at a lower RPM. That saves some gas. So if you're ever going to save a gas, the road course is probably the place you can save the most. Watching the battle for third, coming up the hill right there. Alex Bowman in the 17. Cole Custer in the double zero. Austin Hill has left them and has left them to fight amongst themselves for that spot with Justin Allgaier following them into the inner loop. Yeah, Bowman's fading just a little bit here, deeper into this run. Custer trying to be able to get around, get in some clean air. I think if he could get around the 17, he would probably drive away, maybe go up there and be able to battle Austin Hill. See Algar back there in the back, not able to close. Yeah, Alex Bowman doing a really nice job of hitting his marks, not making mistakes. Cole Custer, I agree with you, Junior, has a little more speed, keeps showing the front of his car to Alex Bowman, but Alex hadn't gotten faked out by it. Just trying to apply the pressure to the right spot. This might be the best spot of all, as he was right up next to the back bumper of Bowman, but now, Bowman pulls away on the front stretch and 
Once again, Cole Custer will try to outbreak him, but he's just too far away to take advantage of that in turn one. Cole Custer tried to send it on in there to the bottom of one, but he didn't have enough to get up alongside Bowman. He'll lose a car length actually in that little short straightaway before they got to two. That's turn three right there, the left-hander. And again, Alex Bowman in control of this battle. Cole Custer doing everything he can to get to the back bumper, but he can't do it, at least not quite yet. And we have to assume, too, that if the Gibbs cars are going to struggle to get to the end of this race on fuel, the rest of the field must have some concerns of some sort. So how hard is Cole Custer racing? How hard is the 17 racing? Just because Bowman's lost the back of Hill doesn't mean that he doesn't have the pace. He could be in fuel save mode. That's a great point, Junior. Everybody with 22 to go probably does have to save a little bit of fuel. And how do you do it? You just try to stay off the throttle as long as you can. Try not to slow the car down too much in the corner so you don't have to recover with the throttle. Lift a little bit early and maybe not even go full throttle down the straights. With just 21 laps to go in the race. Let's get a few updates. We got a spin. We got a spin here in the carousel. The 78 has gone around. Entering the carousel. Will he keep it going? He, he got does. it going there. One more coming. One more coming. He refires. He keeps, keeps going. All and right. Anthony go, Alfredo. Go, 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 go. He just got a little bit behind there, Rick got over the curbs entering the bus stop back in started moving around on him could not get the car under control as he started to head into the car so good jobs not hitting anything all the competitors staying clear of the 78 we stay green and we'll continue with those updates start with Dylan and so for Ty Gibbs even though they are short on fuel the message to him has still been to save because the more they save the more fuel they'll have in the car when they have to come down for their final stop and thus the less fuel they need to add and the less time they're going to spend on pit road. So uh, that's the strategy for the 19. They're still telling him to save your tires. These are the ones that are going to be on to the end, Marty. Just had a conversation with Andy Street, the crew chief for Austin Hill, the regular season championship leader. And yes, they saw John Hunter Nemechek top off with fuel. Street told me we're going to wait and see what happens. We're going to see if a caution comes out. If we do have to top off, it'll be late in this race. They are still three laps short, Dylan. Alex Bowman behind him runs in the third spot, said he feels like this is his worst road course, so he's trying to get some laps for tomorrow where he's in a playoff battle on the cup side as well. They are a lap and a half to two laps short. So the message to Gray, from Greg Ives to Alex has been the same thing. Just save here and try and get us to the end as he battles Custer for that third spot, Kim. And as we talk about Cole Custer, Jonathan Tony came on the radio and said, we are at best two laps short. I need you to save as much as possible. Running behind him in the fifth position, Justin Algaier. They told Justin, we are one lap to one and a half laps short on fuel. I need you to back for 30 feet until I tell you to stop. All right, now Rick, one, one and a half laps, that is absolutely obtainable. That is what makes having a cup driver like Cole Custer, I know it's Xfinity full-time now, but he's moved up, he's been in the cup side, and, and I don't mean just experience. More engineers, bigger organizations, you get more coaching on how to save gas. Cole Custer's gonna have one of the best ideas, Bowman as well. This, you know, when we talk about experienced drivers, it's just not how fast you could go. What else do you know? Well, these two drivers here, they look like they're so close because they are playing cat and mouse. They are just backing up, making sure they save gas. I'm shocked if Gibbs isn't saving gas because he all of a sudden isn't the fastest car on the racetrack. And to go back, to circle back to the conversation of Nemechek, we wondered about his pace. Well, he has been roughly one second off the leaders since coming back out on the track behind traffic as you see Custer and Bowman. Oh, well, this is tagged it, and they both go around, synchronized spins in turn one. And Custer gets it going again, as did Bowman. Right now, every, what, we were supposed to be saving gas. What were y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a situation where Cole Custer had been right on the back bumper of a 17 of Bowman. It looked as though he was content with running there, trying to save fuel, until they came into turn one, where both of them went in pretty aggressively. The double zero got into the 17, and they both went around. Yeah, Cole Custer had put a lot of pressure on him, even the lap before he was underneath him. Right here, just outbreaks him and goes sliding through the corner. See, this is the lap before. And then Alex just drives underneath him and crosses him back over. And then this lap, the, the next lap where they end up spinning the same thing, Cole Custer tried to drive in the corner, outbreak him, and he loses control. So. Cole tried two laps in a row to make this pass. Look how far back he comes. He's out of control right here. Look at the car moving around. But the 17 moved down on him as well. Just hard racing 
a little confusing. We talked that they're thinking they're saving fuel, but neither one of these guys at this point is saving fuel. They're racing hard. Yeah, Jeff, to your point, it's like the 17. I mean, I'm, I don't know if he thought the double zero was going to get down there. He was so far back. I mean, because the double zero is all into the curb. Either way, both cars spin. Yeah, the double zero hit the curb, and it kind of got him up the racetrack a little bit. The 17 thought he wasn't coming there, and they both just misjudged it some. But that, that thing happened for two laps, and now here's Custer in the grass. Yeah, trouble in turn number three for Cole Custer. He's off in the grass. He spun around. He's facing the other way. He's trying to get the car going. A little wet grass from the rains of a night ago, and he's still trying and trying and trying to get back onto the course. He's going to make it. He has given up a lot of spots, but most importantly, he has given up a ton of time on the stopwatch. He's watching Cole Custer coming up to the S's here, and he got offline coming into two. And when he got offline, the car darted driver's left right into the grass. And at that point, it was too late for Cole. The damage has already been done, not only to the car getting off of the racetrack, but trying to get back on the racetrack and trying to make up that lost ground in what was looking like to be a top five afternoon here with Cole Custer. Rick, I normally blame you, but I think I jinxed Cole Custer. I was just talking <laughs> about his experience level, and here he is in two altercations. Gibbs still with a 3.7 second lead over Austin Hill, 17 to go. Under 15 laps to go in the Shriners Children's 200 at the Glen. Still out front, it has been Ty Gibbs. A dominant day for him. 59 laps led. He's got a 3.6 second lead over Austin Hill. The question is, does he have enough fuel? We're about to find out. Again, 15 laps away from that. With more on the 10 of Kyle Busch. Now Kyle Busch just lost his spot to Josh Berry just a moment ago. You can see the eight car in front of the 10. He radioed to the team third gear is out. So what would you do then, Dale Jr.? If you don't have third gear here, it's kind of tough to get around Watkins Glen without that. Yeah, it is. I mean, you basically just skip from second to fourth, and you'll lose a ton of speed climbing the hill up the S's. We saw him get past at, in the S's earlier. I wasn't sure if he was just saving fuel, but obviously not able to drive that car up the hill 
like the other competitors without third gear. That's such a disadvantage. I mean, even when you get in fourth gear, the only time you get into it really is at the very top of the hill. And the rest of the time, you're mostly in third gear. So, yeah, Kyle Busch is, is going to be very difficult for him to make lap time here. Kyle Busch right now running in the 11th spot, falling a little bit further back behind Josh Berry. In front of him as Barry slides coming out of turn number one. Watch and see what Kyle does coming up the S's here. It's a difficult ass with no third gear. And he does continue to lose ground to Josh Barry, just trying to just trying to nurse this car home with 14 less than 14 laps to go. But the other side of that is it's almost a forced save for fuel. So it's like forcing him. If you were gonna save fuel fourth gear all the way around this track second fourth gear. I mean, that would be a way to save more than anyone else. It's, at, it's probably not going to be able to make the time, the lap time that he wants. But look, he's hanging on to the back of this eight car. If he's able to lift earlier for the uh, braking zones and also using fourth gear, he's going to probably save as much, if not more, than anyone else going around this racetrack. Could pay off in the end trying to get to the finish. That's a positive outlook for a tough situation for Kyle Busch again. No third gear. So Rick, when I look at the running order, you have Gibbs and Hill who are kind of out there a little bit. But Mayer and Allguy are right now, when I look at the pace for the last five or six laps, they are a second off what I think we have seen them run, which tells me that they are aggressively trying to save fuel. Probably think that's their best option at the moment. Watching Sheldon Creed, watching Kaz Grala. That is the race for sixth and seventh. That's 18 seconds behind race leader Ty Gibbs in a private battle right now heading up the backstretch. Yeah, right there, Bowman in front of him. Spun earlier down in turn one with the double zero. He's rejoined in front of these guys, and Creed's having a great day. He's lost a lot of spots on some restarts late in this race, but sitting right here with a top 10 finish in his hands. Got a good fast car once they get going. Trying to close this one out with about 12 laps to go. Yeah, and also Kaz Grala, remember, he was through the grass, knocking the gold bowling pins down. And he is, he is still continuing to fight. Kaz, in these road races, shows his ability. Finds himself in the top five, racing top seven, top eight a lot. Doing a good job again today. Steve, different with these cars as far as if they're going to run out of gas. We see the 21. He's made the decision to come in front of you, Marty. Yeah, coming down pit road. The surprise here to me, Steve, is they're going to go with four Goodyear tires, and they had trouble getting the other side of the car up, fuel to make it to the end. But are you surprised they're going with four tires here? Nemechek, his rival for the regular season points, went with no tires, fuel only on his stop. Well, I'm surprised they went with four, but Nemechek, really didn't run a whole lot faster. He actually lost some time, so maybe they are just racing against Nemechek. It'll be interesting to see where this 21 blends uh, versus the 20 itself, right? So I think they're going to be okay against the 20. Plus, not only are they going to come out in front of Nemechek, but easily in front of Nemechek, actually. You see the advantage of waiting to pit versus what the 20 did for gas only. Plus, if they have a late yellow, now they'll have more grip. Steve, why so long on fuel? They only needed a couple laps of fuel. Why would they have stayed so long and it changed all the tires? Well, if they're going to change all the tires anyway, they're just racing the 20. So if you look in the upper right in the map, as we see this battle between Kaz Grala and Sheldon Creed, the 21's racing the 20. The 20 came in and took gas only, went to the back and was slow back there. So they basically gapped it. They know they could come on pit road. Takes about 40 seconds to come down pit road, change tires and go back out. That was the magic delta number. They came out in front of the 21. So, or excuse me, in front of the 20. So right now, when I look at the running order, the 21 of Austin Hill, first car that without a doubt can make it on fuel. Now, I think some in front of them are going to save enough, uh, but it's going to be interesting 11 laps to see who can make it. Hill running in the 15th position. Nemechek is 19th. Gibbs, can he make it? Less than 11 to go here at the Glen.
Later on pit road, Ty Gibbs just completing service. Fuel only for the 19. Jason Ratcliffe, the crew chief, said, do not speed on pit entry or pit exit right here. So what the 19 did was run as hard as he can, gap it as many as he can, came down, splash of gas, probably less than 30 seconds on pit road. Now as he leaves pit road, we're going to see where he blends around other cars. So there's Sheldon Creed right in front of him. Sheldon Creed is the fifth place car. So think about this. Ty Gibbs had such a big lead. He came in. He now has enough gas to make it. So now he can run as hard as he can run while everyone in front of him tries to save enough gas to make it to the end. I mean, that's not a lot of gas. This is so much fun to watch. Yeah, he was only seven and a half seconds back now if after he came off pit road. Yeah, so if you're the crew chief of the 19 right here and you're on the radio, Jason Ratcliffe is probably giving him in just specific instructions now to push, make it as uncomfortable as possible for everyone in front of you. Go get him, right? Because the one of Mayer is the leader with the seven of Allgaier, Bowman in third, and they've all been saving fuel for quite some time. So now it's two questions. Have they saved enough? And even if they have, do they have a big enough gap over what has been the fastest car in Watkins Glen all day long? Sheldon Creed doesn't want to give the spot up, though. He would not give it up to the 19. So we'll see if he outbreaks him here into turn one. He'll go by Creed. Now he'll set his sights on Bowman just in front of him. Looking at Ty Gibbs now going to position number four, trying to close in and try to take the third spot away from Alex Bowman to Marty. I see Kaz Grala coming down pit road. All of the Toyotas were about four laps short. They went as far as they could. Nice recovery for Grala, though, after the excursion through the grass. Also, Daniel Hemrick on pit road in front of you, Dylan. And I think they thought they could go a little bit longer, but now they're changing tires, and they've got a hiccup on the right side. So this is going to definitely cost them a lot of time for Hemrick. Oh, no. Look up underneath there. Daniel, take it out of gear and put it back in gear again. Oh, some sort of issue. Put the tire on. Not rolling as we see Gibbs continuing to pick drivers off one at a time. He's got all guy and mayor in front of him. Eight laps to go and about six and a half seconds to make up. And pace, unbelievable. You see how much he's already gapped the two cars he's passed. And now he can see him. If you ever wanted to motivate a race car driver, you give them a clear point of who they were trying to get. So now he's in third, trying to run down two cars, trying to save gas. His last lap on the racetrack, two seconds faster than the leader. There you see it. 31 car round into the gravel right in front of me. He may be stuck in it. He came in here sideways. He's stuck. He's stuck. Yeah, he lost control and I'm got sorry. into it backwards sideways, and now he just got mired in that gravel. That's Parker Retzloff, and the caution comes out. There'll be a restart. All right, Steve, does this play into the favor of a Sam Mayer and an Allgaier? Can they have enough fuel to get to the end with cautions? I think everyone that's saving fuel now has to feel much better about it with these yellows. Your concern instantly becomes, do we go into overtime? Not for this yellow, but how many more yellows do we see? Let's see what happens exactly to Parker. It's just entering turn. Oh, man, he just cooks it down into turn six. Man, Jeff, it's almost like he, I don't know if he had no brakes or low brakes or, I mean, his, his entry speed is much higher than he was hoping for. Yeah, he was he was in there deep and got the car turned enough, but you can see what happened. He just entered kind of siding, siding, sliding sideways and just got dug in there. And then here's 11. We saw him on pit road having problems. Well, here he is before he came to pit road. So he, came, he had something happen on the racetrack. He came to pit road and they were trying to deal with it. Maybe the track bar broken or something. I can't, it's hard for me to tell. Tough on machinery. Bouncing around and jumping the curves as Hemrick back on pit road. Under six laps to go in this race. Jack staying in hand, so they're going to go underneath the right side, Dylan. Yeah, and when they dropped it off the jack the last time, it looked like the rear end or the body kind of shook on the rear end of the race car. So uh, that is what they're looking at here right now, just to try and figure out exactly what the problem is and if it's something related to the track bar or something like that. Yeah, you see the crew member shaking the body back and forth. So the track bar 
basically named for that because it tracks the rear end housing. As the rear end housing travels, something has to keep it centered left to right. The truck arms basically connect it to the middle of the car, but it can, you know, it can go left to right. The track bar is what does that. And when one breaks, the rear end housing moves left to right. So obviously something mechanical that can't be repaired on pit road. The 11 is going to go behind the wall. And remember, this 11 is, you know, we talk a lot about the points. I mean, look at it currently, right? Kligerman minus eight, Herps plus eight, Creed plus 24. Now Hemrick plus 31. He is quickly falling towards that bubble. <laughs> yeah, let's check in with KP and Brad down on the Peacock pit box. All right, Herps plus eight now to Parker Kligerman. That's dead. This just got interesting. It has uh, now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I thought we were going to play out. We were going to see yeah. Parker and those guys. We were going to see Creed, everybody save fuel. How was that going to shake out? How was that going to affect it? Now we've got cars out there with old tires that, as Steve said, could make it to the end. We've got Ty Gibbs, who's running a totally different race than everybody else is <laughs> yes. running. So yeah. we, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how hard does Gibbs go to, to get that, that lead once we drop the, the green flag again? And Parker's put himself in a good position. Yeah. Kind of like how he's done all season long, taking advantage of opportunities, just hanging around, giving himself a good chance to get a good finish. It's going to be interesting, though. I'm wondering about the fuel a little bit. We heard yeah. Steve talk about it. Seems like everyone's okay. Are they? We're going to find out. And if we do have to go to overtime, what's going to happen with that? I keep hearing what Steve's saying. You know, you got to save fuel. You got to yeah. save fuel. From a race car driver's perspective, he said <laughs> it right there with Ty Gibbs. When you can see that guy in front of you, you press a little harder. These guys, even though they're trying to save fuel, I know Parker and Creed are pressing a little bit harder. So now that you have to just not be married to a strategy, you can't be so stubborn to be afraid to get off the strategy. Now, I don't know about the one and the seven, be pretty hard to pit from the front, but someone mid pack is going to come. You know, you'll think about Brandon Jones, right? He's back here in ninth. We're going to see chaos on the restarts. I know there's 22 cars in the lead lap, but do you come put fresh tires on, fill it up with gas, and make sure you're okay? There you go. Bowman, a bunch of guys are coming. Brandon Jones, as I mentioned, Parker. They're going to assure they're okay on fuel and get perhaps some fresh tires. You see a lot of takers on pit road, Dylan. Yeah, and if you're somebody like Alex Bowman, why not? You're just here for wins, so you may as well come down, put some tires on, make sure you're good to the end. They'll add fuel, change four good years for Alex Bowman. Parker Kligerman also in. They were going to, I think, try to stay out there. If not for that yellow, it was going to be really close, but they'll make no adjustments. Just adds one can of Sunoco fuel on the 48. Going by the 31 of Parker Retzloff after he just got out of the gravel pit. A busy pit road with only five laps to go in the race. Out front, it's Mayer and Allgaier, but Gibbs lurking there in third.
Ty Gibbs trying to make it back to back wins on road courses. He won at Indy last week. Now he'll start in the second row, and we've seen him make the pass when he gets to turn one. Well, starting he's been in the second row. He's been crazy fast, but there's a few things we have to keep in mind, right? We don't know how slow the one and seven are because they were saving gas. Maybe they have some speed left. Gibbs has been spectacular. We can't take that away from him. But look right there, zero tires. Let's not forget. If tires are worth something, Austin Hill put four tires on under his pit stop. He's going to start right behind Ty Gibbs. So there's a lot of question marks in those front three rows of how this restart's going to go. There's no question that everybody's looking at Ty Gibbs. He's led 64 laps. Right. The guy's had a ton of speed. But I'm not sure I'm ready to quite give him the trophy. Not to mention Kyle Busch in that L.A. Golf. You see it second car on the right side right there. It's been reported he has no third gear. So he's going to have to really work those S's going from second to fourth. Let's listen in to Allgaier. You are the man, okay? Turn one, you've been the man all day long. Going to do it again. Copy that, bud. Let's do this. There's that pep talk that he needed. We'll see if he can get by Mayer and possibly hold off the 19 of Ty Gibbs on this restart. They're coming up on four laps to go at the Glen. Into the restart zone they go. Back up through the gears. All the way to the wall was the 19 of Gibbs. They're four wide into turn one. The seven of Olgeyer goes way wide. Gibbs comes out and he's side by side for the lead. Side by side into turn number two. Everybody rooting and gouging for every bit of real estate they can find. Ty Gibbs, Sam Mayer. Gibbs is away with the lead. That's going to bottle up everybody from second on back. We saw the 10 car of Kyle Busch. We got a crash almost. <laughs> what a great save. I thought that was a wreck for sure. Kaz Grala gets it under control. Lots of contact. Cars coming through. Oh, the seven's around in front of the field. A lot of cars piling in. Big damage. The 20, the nine car, the 26. Bowman in the 17 spun out. Foam everywhere. Happens every time here at Watkins Glen at the end of these races, on these late restarts, down into turn, down into the bus stop side by side, never, never works. A lot of, a lot of uh, debris on the racetrack, but also a lot of fluid down here in the carousel. Let's take a look at it. Sam Mayer takes the 19 as low as he possibly can, but at some point he has to come up to make corner entry. 19 shallow entry blows the corner, but just look through the rear grip of the 19. He can get on the gas and still accelerate next to the one of Mayer. Now I'm going to give it to Mayer, Rick. I thought it was game over right here on the outside, but he stays to the right side of the 19. The 19 gives him a little, I think that's all fair game, just a little push and shove. And here comes the 21 up through and then this is the save dale jr talking about look at this dale tank slapping on the middle of the straightaway at 170 miles an hour yeah he gets into the corner but here's where algar gets in trouble coming out of here he just gets a little clip just hard tight racing exiting the bus stop and then all the cars come piling in just some incredible racing but it, it always happens down here at this part of the racetrack late in the race Everybody trying to get everything they can. Let's see. It's like Cole Custer just trying to, you know, Cole's trying to stay in the fight. Comes back across the racetrack and clips the seven and turns him around. And this save right here, I think, is that Connor Mozak? I yes. think that's who it is in the 24. Yep. I mean, you talk about, I mean, that is, you know what I'm talking about? That is the absolute fastest area at Watkins Glen, the end of the back straightaway. along with the 48 of Parker Kligerman. Missing the seven right there of Justin Allgaier might be the pass or the miss that gets him into the playoffs. That's Connor Bozak and the Toyota on board. And then you see all the damage with Kaz Grala in the 26. 
And now this is now a scary time for all those guys that were trying to save gas and work all the different situations. You see everybody swerving. Let's listen into the one of Sam Mayer. Literally about wrecked us out of the fing essence in front of the whole field. Like, am I skewed or is he like this? Fed you some fender. I mean, honestly, if I'm the leader, I'm telling him to do that. So we just got to get a good start here and give it back. I mean, we're our only friends right now. 10 4 right there. All right, so that is a great, you know, fired up young race car driver. And I loved that was Kevin Hamlin who said, listen, I hear you, you're not wrong, but let me tell you, this is Kevin Hamlin, who spots on Sunday, who's won races on Sunday, who says, if I'm spotting the leader being Ty Gibbs, I'm telling him to do exactly what he did to you. So I know you're mad. This kind of goes back to the Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson thing at Pocono, yeah. right? What is acceptable, what is not? I loved how Kevin Hamlin didn't fire his driver up more. He didn't add fuel to this fire, right? He was factual, honest, and Sam Mayer responded with, okay, then I need to go get there. I mean, I, that was really well. This one car has really kind of turned a corner in my mind, right? He's always finding his way now to the finishes. He used to have some issues before that. Um, so we'll see now. Now it's up to Sam to see if he can get a little uh, momentum on the start. Hopefully he has enough fuel to get it all the way back around to the finish. He said 10-4 uh, to that information that was delivered. Yep, Parker Kligerman, well, you know, he was 16th coming to the green, and now we'll restart Probably inside the top five. Here's Connor Bozak. Look at that. Like you said, Steve, 170 miles an hour. Well, Friday night, under the lights on USA, it's NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Daytona. That coverage beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. And the guy running second right now, Austin Hill, so good on super speedways. Well, if you sell sheet metal, you think Watkins Glen and Daytona back to back, this is the best thing ever, because there's not a car out there without damage. You mentioned Austin Hill, so good at the speedways. But here he is again, second. Like, this guy just finds a way. Mm -hmm. Good cars, bad cars, wreck fest strategy. It doesn't matter the style of racing. He just seems to find his way at the front. So, you know, big announcement. Jeff mentioned it earlier about the 21 saying he was coming back full time next year. Marty, that has to have this team excited. Oh, yeah. Talk to Andy Street about that this morning. They're fired up for year number three with Austin Hill. But what a move. We talked about you taking tires there. Did you see this coming? This could play exactly into your favor. Well, obviously, we didn't see it coming, but we were hoping it was going to come out. Uh, it was our only chance really to have a shot at it here at the end of the race with the situation we had there in our pit stop. We were a little short on fuel, much more than the other guys, so it was a gamble. And 
right now it's paid off, so hopefully it'll pay off here next uh, lap or two here in overtime. Yeah, now the big question is, how does he get by Ty Gibbs? How's he been on restarts all day long? He's actually been pretty strong here on restarts here as of late, later in the race, so uh, hopefully we got something for that 19 here. There you go. Ty Gibbs been the fastest car all day long. Can Austin Hill still one here at Watkins Glen, Dylan? Yeah, it's been dominant for the 19 team. Let's check in with Jason Ratcliffe. So uh, you've led, I think, 67 laps. What's been the biggest challenge of this day? It seems like it's been pretty straightforward. Uh, I'd say the last four laps has been, been the biggest challenge. We kind of knew it was coming. You know, at some point, everybody's been being uh, pretty good all day, but I figured if we got a late race restart, it, it could it could turn into this. Um, I know we got a few guys behind us on tires. I think these things usually refire pretty good, so we'll let them cool off here a few laps. Right now, I'm actually more concerned about fuel. We took just enough to maybe buy us a lap or two, so we're still in good shape, but hopefully the cleanup crew's picking up the pace back there. How impressed have you been with Ty on these restarts? He's been dynamite today. He has, yeah, he, uh, you know, but every time we do it, those other guys learn, you know, so uh, he'll get, he's got a few more good ones in him, I'm sure. Uh, those guys behind him are going to be chomping at the bit to get to him, so hopefully we'll just see one more, and uh, we'll get back over here to the white flag and get it done. Been a great day for the 19 team, and hopefully they have enough fuel to get through and get to the checkered flag. I've known Jason Ratcliffe a long time. I don't think he's selling us a bill of goods. He did seem <laughs> yeah. a bit concerned about fuel taking only enough on that gas and go stop to make it to the finish with a, maybe a lap or two extra. So cleanup, we saw that continuing out there. Let's go around the horn, uh, talk with our guys around the racetrack once again. And the radio we heard back man from Sam Mayer leads me to believe that he's not going to be friendly through the S's anymore the way he was treated last time through. It's time to unlace the gloves and take them off. This is what we came here for. This is what we love at the end of these races, these overtime finishes. Ty Gibbs has been strong all day long, but he's got them lined up behind him. They've got to catch him and not make sure, and make sure he doesn't get away. That's the number one thing. But there are a lot of people behind him that would love to take that spot, take this win this afternoon. Dale, what about you? Yeah, I think the only chance for the 21 car is to make physical contact with the back of the 19, not only be pushing the issue and fill up the mirror, but Ty Gibbs is a good enough race car driver that that's not going to be enough. You're going to have to move that car around. Let him know you're back there by actually getting into him whenever you can and worry him to death and have him overdrive the car into a mistake. And uh, I don't know if they'll just have clear enough pace to go drive around the 19. It's going to take a little bit of elbowing, a little bit of pushing and shoving. Well, look, one thing's for sure. No one has taken the fight to Ty Gibbs on restarts all day. Ty Gibbs has dominated on restarts. He's driven into turn one way more speed than everybody, even from the second row. So if Austin Hill does decide to line up next to him, he has to know that what he's got to do is launch, at least launch with Ty Gibbs, and then not let him out break you. You have better tires. Ask of those tires a lot. Make them tell you that they weren't enough grip. You've got to be committed to driving in the corner and outbreak Ty Gibbs. You cannot let him outbreak you. If you do, he's going to drive by you and he will be gone. We'll check back in on the Peacock pit box. Listen, listen, I, that last restart was fascinating to me. I didn't know you could run eight wide here. Uh, but obviously you can when you get down into turn one. Ty yes. Gibbs, once again, had an incredible restart. But watch this right here. And you look at Sam Mayer. If you're going to block, block. Don't pretend to block. He gave it back up and allowed Ty Gibbs to come into the corner as Justin blew the corner off. Yeah, I can't believe that Ty got under Sam. Like I think Sam was trying to give himself a little bit of angle to get into the corner. And then you go back up through the hill there, and Sam's trying to hang on. He does a good job coming back. But Ty Gibbs is so strong, he roughs him up. I think Sam's learned a little bit from that incident. I think he's going to go after him really hard on this restart. And then poor Justin Allgaier gets destroyed. So I'm looking at Sam Mayer. I'm also going to be watching Austin Hill on this restart. He's got fresher tires. But look where Parker Kligerman is. He sits fifth. Well, he's where he's at. Seventh right now. Yes. So he continues to move up through the field. This is going to be one heck of a restart. And you're going to have to get it all. Whoever gets out of turn one has a great chance to win this race. Yeah, listen, I... I'm glad I'm sitting here on the booth or sitting here on the box watching this because when that corner gets blocked right there, all heck breaks loose. But as I watch this, Rick, and as you guys watch this, we've seen this time and time again, and especially on road courses and especially in the Xfinity series. These restarts seem to have a way of repeating themselves. <laughs> well, how aggressive. Yeah, that's the question is, will they be able to get all the way back around to the white flag? Well, 
will they be able to get to the white flag and will some of them even make it to the green flag? I mean, once again, we didn't see the choose, so we are not coming to the green. I mean, we haven't seen pit roads op open yet, right? So we have the 19 of Gibbs that we thought was okay on fuel because he had pitted, but remember, we're assuming, we don't know how much fuel he put in. Right. Jason Ratcliffe kind of mentioned that he was way closer than we thought. Austin Hill's great on fuel. Sam Mayer, he's stretched all the way from lap 48. He, first of all, great job of saving gas. How he's got to this point is super impressive. And then it's kind of a mixed bag behind them of guys on two tires and four tires and good gas and bad gas. So um, there's a lot of different storylines in this, Marty. And see, this could be a pivotal moment in the battle for the regular season points. Look at John Hunter Nemechek's left side. I mean, it's absolutely peeled away. And NASCAR is going to have the team come down pit road and fix that left side for John Hunter Nemechek. He is sitting 11th right now on the racetrack. And that picture on the left-hand side of your screen could dramatically change. There will be an official who oversees the repairs on the 20. And once they kind of sign off on that, then John Hunter can go back out. They fought track position all day long but Steve they're going to make them come down pit road and make this repair right now so Marty are they going to allow them to add foam because you must have foam between the door panel and the metal the door foam I know it I, took some out there you go on the radio I don't see foam anywhere I heard foam just mentioned on the radio but they right now have bear bond and that's it so Ben Bayshore kind of leading this repair for John Hunter Nemechek and clearly they want to make it as quick as they can I believe we're coming back around to the green flag and they're telling him to pick the door foam up off the rocker and then tape it up inside the door so you see the NASCAR official leaning in to kind of oversee the repairs and then they're going to try and tape down the left side Steve that's what they're doing that's great reporting Marty so you see that the door foam some of it is obviously missing but the others have fallen down into the rocker so they're telling the team listen that has been designed to be in certain areas NASCAR obviously is right there you see the official so there is obviously enough foam for the officials to feel that that is still safe and with enough integrity, you ask, why don't they just add new? This is part of the, cat, the crash clause. You cannot add new foam. If the door peels open and all of that foam would have fallen out, this would have been day over for John Hunter Nemechek. So great work by the team, the crew chief, Marty, great telling the story of picking that foam up and replacing where it's supposed to be, which is basically midway up the door. Um, it all comes down to you know, enough foam, and NASCAR obviously knows how it's designed, so it's up to them to decide if it's enough or not. All right, Kim, what about the one of Sam Mayer? Do they have enough fuel to make it to the end? It seems as though they do have enough fuel. I don't know if there was a second overtime, if they would be good, but Sam Mayer fired up. You heard him on the radio, and then spotter Kevin Hamlin having to talk him down. It happened a second time. Sam very fiery, and Hamlin talking him down again and telling him to look at the bigger picture. Yes, a second one on the season would be great, but remember, they're trying to keep a top five streak alive. They've had four in a row. It matches his best ever career-wise. He could have a best historic career-wise five straight top five finishes if he's able to hold this position, Dylan. And Kim, for Parker Kligerman, it's been a really, really gritty afternoon. They've gone backwards, they've gone forwards, and, and this is just a testament to the effort that this big machine racing crew has put in all summer. A couple months ago, Parker was not real confident about the, the state of them making the playoffs and they they've kind of locked things down and everybody's gotten more comfortable with each other and now they've done their job today and sit just nine points out of the playoffs behind Riley Hurt. So it's been a hard fought effort. He runs ninth right now and going to try and get a couple more here on this restart. It's going to be two laps and I asked the question earlier and Steve I want you to answer. Will they get back to the white flag? I mean we see how aggressive they were with four laps to go. Now if there's only two laps how aggressive do they get on the track? Well, aggression, but there's more than just aggression. There's low fuel levels. Cars may not accelerate. If I'm setting a line, Rick, it's not a very favorable line that we're going to see two green flag laps here. Um, but, you know, such as racing, right now the 19 can't worry about the fuel. He has to get a good start. The 21 is hoping to just stay to his left over there to turn two. Side by side, it's Ty Gibbs in the 19. And the 21 of Austin Hill. And we heard from Austin Hill's crew chief. Andy Street said he's been getting better and better at the restarts. We're about to find out how good he is. Ty Gibbs back into the gas. Austin Hill on his outside. Gibbs in a turn one. Contact made. He's tagged. Mayer gets into the back of him and around it goes. Hill also collected in it. They spin around. 
So far, we stay green. We'll see if they keep going. And it's Sheldon Creed that will take the lead in turn two. Sam Mayer to second. Josh Berry to third. Sheldon Creed trying to make it back to the white flag as Sam Mayer has damage on that Chevrolet. Yeah, a lot of tires spoke. You have to wonder if that car can get to the finish line. Creed out front, though. What a huge, huge day this would be for this two car, and what a big, big change it would do to the points around the bubble. That battle, Creed has been a part of it. It gets loose right there. There's a lot of fluid on the racetrack. The eight car is spinning out. A lot of debris and fluid down there in the carousel. Cars struggling to get through it. Speedy Dry also down here in turn six. See Creed driving into the corner. He's free. The one of the one of Mayer is right there with him. Overtime presented by Credit One and now side by side for the lead. Creed misses turn seven and around him goes Mayer. Mayer out in front and they're spinning behind him as the white flag comes out. One more time around. We saw a car spin out of turn number seven. Mayer, does he have enough fuel? That will be the question. Here comes Sam Mayer, final time, entering the S's in turn number two. So far, so good for Mayer. Now it's Sheldon Creed in the number two position. Across turn four for the last time, Sam Mayer with about a nine car length lead as he races up the back straightaway. Everything's clear on the back side of the racetrack over here. The tire smoke seeming to dissipate just a little bit. The two closing in now on Sam Mayer. Can Sam Mayer get through the carousel clean it's very dirty and slick over here. Car sliding around. The two now knows that. Makes the adjustment. Coming out of this corner, just about 10 car lengths back. Yes, yeah, Sam Mayer knows how slick the racetrack is. It wasn't completely clean from that oil on track, but you cannot get into turn six too easy and let the two of Cree get to near you. He gets through there, coming to seven. He has saved fuel maybe better than anyone at the Glen. Sam Mayer comes out of turn number seven. Does he have enough to get to the checkered flag? Creed is going to finish second. Mayer's going to win at Watkins Glen. Yeah, boys. Good stuff. So smart. So, so smart. Thank you, guys. He got his first career win on a road course at Road America. Ty Gibbs, you see in the 19, rolling back after a dominant performance today, leading 70 laps. He doesn't get to the checkered flag first, but the 20-year-old mayor getting his second career win, and it comes on another road course. When you asked if they would make two laps green, I bet they wouldn't. I was wrong, but it was absolute chaos filled. Sam Mayer, much like kind of like Road America, like that crazy overtime finish. He manages the track conditions. And Steve, conserving fuel. I mean, he was last on pit road at lap 48. This, this race took 86 laps, 38 laps. He was yeah. able to go fuel-wise. Yeah, more than any, really, any crew chief thought they could go. Just a great call by Marty Lindley. Great work by Kevin Hamlin, the spotter. We talked about it. We heard the radio talking to his driver, getting him refocused. Austin Hill uh, dooring him a bit there as he goes by. I'm not sure if that was a congratulations or maybe didn't appreciate the way we raced. Up for interpretation. Mayor coming back around. He's got enough fuel to make another lap, so we'll see if he's got enough for a burnout. Sam and he said it's just changed my perspective being able to get to victory lane made us all realize we could do it and as a team they felt like they were stronger he said the weight was lifted off his shoulders and now the 20 year old has two wins already in the Xfinity series celebrating here at the Glen.
and he'll dive into the arms of his crew. Kemp. Sam Mayer celebrating with his entire crew. And when he won at Road America, he talked about getting the monkey off his back, how the win should come easier. Although I don't know that this win came very easy. He had to do a lot of fuel saving, had to be very smart um, as he got very aggressive with some of the contenders out front, Ty Gibbs and Austin Hill. Man, congratulations, Sam. You win in overtime on low fuel. Take us through the restart to start. Yeah, I mean, that first one, I got used up. Um, thought I had a good one there, but um, <laughs> man, I mean, all glory to God for this one because we had to work our tails off for it. I mean, Marty on top of the box, and everyone on pit road, we uh, we earned this one for sure. Feels good to have a car as fast as Xfinity 10G, no matter where you go and no matter what the situation is. And uh, I mean, to do it in front of all you Northeasterners feels really, really good. Thank you, guys. We heard on the radio your frustration with Ty Gibbs, and then we saw you give it to him on that restart. That fair or foul, in your opinion? Yeah, I, I will hopped it. That's unfortunate. I feel bad for doing that, obviously. You don't want to take out a Gibbs car like that or any car like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, just trying to get another win in the Xfinity Series. I mean, I got a lot of catching up to do. And I mean, I was I was in there. I put my nose in there. And uh, I mean, that's part of, part of it. Fenders are fenders. So you're just calling that an accident, a racing incident? Yeah, that's an accident, but I think I think everyone can agree that it's okay for an Xfinity Series regular to win this race. Congratulations. Thank you. That is Sam Mayer. Let's get the other perspective, Dylan Welch. And Ty Gibbs going to officially be credited with, uh, I believe it's a 17th place finish today. So Sam called that a racing incident. Do you agree with that? Yeah, you know, I think when you have to race out of desperation like that and, and you wheel hop and, you know, clean the leader out, it's just, uh, just uh, you know, it's, I guess you can call the racing move in, in that book, but it just, it just really sucks. Um, you know, we have really fast Monster Energy. Uh, he gets us Toyota Supra. I really appreciate all the hard work from them, and um, we, had a, we had a great time out there. Definitely wish that caution didn't come out there, but, um, you know, uh, it definitely sucks to get, you know, cleaned out there. So I uh, had a good time running these things this year. When you lead as many laps as you lead today, 70, have a day like you had, how do you make your peace with the result and the result the way it happened? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I think it's just uh, it's it's a part of life and it's a part of racing and you, you just get over it. And, um, you know, when and when there's you know stuff like that happens and, and you know, def, best desperate moves like that happen, it's just. You know, it's just part of it, and you just got to keep going, um, and, and we had a great car today. I appreciate all the hard work from uh, my guys back at the shop, and, and we were really fast. Do you feel like you need to go have a conversation with Sam? Uh, I mean, I don't really know how much of a conversation you can, you know, really have with him and in um, and, and that situation. Like I said, it's we've been kind of grew up around racing around each other. I think we have, he has more starts than I do, and, you know, this is his second win, so um, congratulations to him on the second win, and uh, definitely wish I had got my 13th there. Tough way to end it for Ty Gibbs, the dominant car today at Watkins Glen. And so, as he mentioned, Ty Gibbs is going to end up 17th, and Sam Mayer is now going to head to the Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane. And Ty Gibbs brought it up. It's his second win. The 20 year old, impressive today, uh, able to save fuel even through overtime, aggressively into turn one. He turns the 19 of Gibbs around. But then holds off the 21 of Austin Hill, who was right there with him and fighting all the way to the end as well as Creed. To victory lane he goes, Sam Mayer. Two career wins now.
celebration in Victory Lane. That's Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane for Sam Mayer. Let's take a look at the standings now as Sam Mayer notches two wins and we see him currently fifth in the playoff standings with his 10 playoff points. Uh, you get five for winning a race. Well, oh, yeah, you see John Hunter still at the top of five wins. Austin Hill uh, looked to be in position again. He's won four races. Allgaier had a good car, got in that accident. So it's really stacking together. But look at the right side right there. Riley Herbst, three points above Parker Kligerman, still with three races remaining. Remember, we have Daytona, Darlington, and Kansas. So. Still a lot of racing to go. Still shocked me to see Josh Berry winless. He's been so good this year. Um, it's going to be a fun battle. I think we're going to see some more first winners this season before this is over. Yeah, unbelievable how tight it is right there. Uh, 12th and 13th, as you mentioned, just three points separating them. Okay, this isn't the first time that there's been a run in between Ty Gibbs and Sam Mayer. We go all the way back to last year and three wide at Martinsville. It doesn't work. Late restart, fresh tires, old tires pushing and shoving. Uh, and you heard Ty mention it. This is more than just a Xfinity Series thing for these two. A right punch, left punch. I'll give it two or three good swings there. Um, these two have grown up racing each other in many, many series. So we'd have to have an hour show showing the highlight reel of Sam Mayer and Ty Gibbs. And then today, here's Sam gets in, said he wheel hop. You see the back of the car kind of fishtail out. I mean, that doesn't give a guy an excuse. So obviously, he was getting in there deeper than he could troll. The 19 definitely was coming to the bottom of the racetrack. I think it's fair to say that 19 feels like he got cleaned out is accurate. And I think, you know, I, that Sam has every opportunity to say that he feels it was a racing incident. Either way, he's in victory lane. Let's check in with Dylan. He's got third place Parker Kligerman with him. Parker Kligerman comes home in the third spot today. Good, hard-fought effort for you guys. But I think there was maybe some discrepancy or confusion on the restart about where you restarted. What is your take on, on where you restarted and where you maybe should have? I'll have to talk to NASCAR and just sort of sort through this one because, you know, we were in fifth, which maybe that was a little too far, but they sent us like four or five spots back, including the eight, who I'm pretty sure is the car that hit us in the, in the wreck. So, I mean, if we went back to maybe turn one, that's where we lined up, which was ninth instead of us being fifth. But, you know, unfortunate part is if you give us a row or two, where were the two and the one is? Right. So I, I knew this was going to be a speedy dry finish. I saw it. I was like, this is just like Road America 2.0. And I made sure to, like, try and avoid those areas. And sure enough, people were flying off left and right in that stuff. Um, you know, everyone here on this Spike Light Cooler Chevy at Big Machine Racing did a good job. We had a car that I was not nearly as fast as Xfinity Chenji Internet. Um, you know, we were probably more of a 10th place car, which is the more disappointing part. We got a great finish. We salvaged great points. We, uh, we put it, kept ourselves in the fight, but, you know, we gotta, I got to sort through this one and find out we weren't, why we weren't faster. The fight is, is less of a fight now. It's just three points that you're out. So how do you feel about that? There's still work to do, but it's better than it was. You know, to me, 3, 15, 7, I don't know. Like, it all feels the same. Like, you know, it's so close. That can happen in a stage, essentially. So we just got to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we scored stage points of all stages today, so that's big deal big deal for us uh you know we're the king of 11th place we were close to finishing 11th in two of those stages and i was gonna spin zone out if i had to not finish 11th but um yeah i think we're, we're doing the right things we just gotta we just need a little more i mean if we just have a 10th more in every run we are definitely a bona fide contender we just we gotta find it all right positive day all the things considered for parker kligerman he finishes third well, Luanza being second for Sheldon Creed, walk me through those final laps after that melee in turn one. You came out with the lead. How did you lose the lead? Um, just oil, I guess, really. Um, I seen the one drive through, not the 54 anymore, the 19, um, and handed me the lead there, and, and uh, I thought that was my race to lose, and it was. And then I got to, I don't know, you guys call it 6 and 7, we call it 10 and 11, but... Um, I got oil on entry there and thought I'd be okay going into 11 and I was just sideways and let him go by and uh, I thought I'd be able to reel him in more that last lap. Uh, obviously Sam did a good job that last lap but just another way to lose one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's tough but I thought we were, you know, a 8th to 10th place car all day. We just couldn't fire and then um, by the time I felt like I would, you know, be on pace, they were, you know, far away. So um, to finish second and to gain points all day, that's, that's good for us. But uh, just stings when you're that close. 
It's a tough one to stomach, but their goal coming into the day, have a solid day, winds up being a top five, and they gain a lot, as he mentioned, plus 22 above the cut line now. Four second place finishes for Sheldon Creed and still hasn't found victory lane, but a big smile there for Sam Mayer. He's been to victory lane twice this year. Remember back in the S's when Sam Mayer and Ty Gibbs were working up through two and this is where Sam thought he was raced wrong. You see right there the 19 makes contact with the one the one very unhappy on the radio and then the final restart. Slid into turn number one tags the 19 he goes around and the one ends up in victory lane at the Glen.